that's fine. I know Isabel is late. Yeah, she's about 15 minutes late. <clears throat> uh, let me just check the other side to see. Sometimes, you know, they end up in the attendees. Okay. Yeah, let me put on my participants list. Let's see if there's a bunch of people over there. I'm stuck on my little laptop right now. I normally have my bigger monitor, but it's somehow acting up when I connect to the monitor. So, very limited real estate on screen right now. We got Bobby in the uh, other side. Okay. Yeah, we have like almost a full house today. This is pretty good. Good evening, everybody. Hey, Bobby. Um, all right, so Joe Tremelli is in here. I see you, Linda. Hey, Linda. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm replacing Amanda. <laughs> Linda's the Linda, man. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> How's everybody doing? So, yeah, we're looking forward to Um. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to, my. I'm still getting weird internet. Like I switched computers because I'm having internet issues and I had this the other day. So if I disappear, I will do something quickly and move and reconnect. I apologize in advance. Hopefully you guys can hear me right now. <laughs> okay. Um, um, if you want, just to make sure that you don't have any issues, uh, you can call in and that way you'll be on in two spots on a phone and on a, an image so that the image sort of comes in. I could try. Yeah, I can. Um, maybe I'll just use. I'll zoom in on my cell phone, and I'll just turn the volume off and put it on mute, and it'll just be there just in case. Okay. Seems fine for now. Yeah, I just I I've had a couple of like unfortunate meetings of this week where it just totally. I'm like right next to like a very high speed router. I think it's actually my computer. I don't think it's the internet connection. Um, it's also a new computer, but you know. Uh, why should anything work the way it's supposed to? Uh, all right, so let me do this. And then once I once I'm in on here, once I get this set up, then we can, I think, get started. I have to email myself this link. So this computer. Will it let me in twice, Jaime? Uh, I will. Okay, fair enough. You you're gonna want to use a different login though, because uh, it will not allow you, it'll cut you off. Got it. Yeah, no, I'll just log into the general meeting. Um, and I could probably just actually stay in the waiting room. And then if you see me disappear, you can let me in. I don't know if that's helpful or not. But Yeah, that might work. Um, just um, let me know what your name is or rename yourself. It should, you should come in as my name because this will probably, one of these is my work account. One of these is my personal account. So it, it should call me, unless it says Kieran's dad or something like that. Okay. <laughs> that, that's happened. Um, Never as a cat, though. <laughs> Never as a cat. Not yet. No. Your Honor, I assure you, I am not a cat. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, Oh, so I mean, let me see what happens here. All right, so I, I guess it did let me in. Okay, good. I can see you there. So yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Okay. All right, you're good to go. All right, very good. All right. Um, Sorry, the volume's not going all the way off of myself. Um, um, okay, so welcome everybody. Um, we'll now kind of officially call the meeting to order. Um, and uh, I think before we get started, I think we just introduced, we, we do have um, a new face um, on the screen. So we have uh, Linda Whitehead is 
going to be the land use uh, consulting attorney with us um, moving forward. Um, Amanda Rossi is uh, is no longer with that firm. Um, so I just wanted to welcome Linda um, to the group into the meeting. Um, Thank so you. Well, Good to be here. Her. Um, and Amanda will always. <laughs> It did take attendance for us at the beginning, so I can maybe sure. you right off and, uh, and and ask you to do that, and then we'll we'll try to jump right into it. Okay, sure. Uh, Seth Roy here. Michael Aronson here. Nina Aaron here. Robert Bowker here. David Chow. David, you're on mute. Yeah. Uh, Eric Talbot here. And are any of the other three? Oh, and Ulysses Castillo? Here. Okay. And are we missing a regular member tonight so that Ulysses is an alternate is sitting informally? Yes, uh, we're missing a regular member. Um, that's Isabel Nguyen. And we're also missing an additional. Um, right, Carla, Carla Leah alternate is, is absent. Correct. Also present is Jaime Martinez, planning director, Joe Tremelli, the uh, outside consulting engineer, and Linda Whitehead, uh, land use attorney, land use counsel. Excellent. How'd uh, I do? <laughs> very good, A plus. Um, and we also do, we have Jamie Kane here as well also. I'm sorry, and Jamie Kane, uh, planning board secretary. Awesome. Sorry, Jamie. Um, <laughs> it's too many faces on the screen. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get into the agenda. Just before we get started, a couple of uh, changes to the agenda. Just really just reordering things um, due to some requests and events that are going on this evening. Um, so we are going to be moving 30 Water Street uh, to the end of the agenda. Um, 136 Croton will go right before then, um, and also just due to consultants that the village has brought in um, for 31 Croton, um, we're going to put 31 Croton on as uh, the first. Um, New, the first item after 8, 8 p.m. So uh, with those changes in mind, I will now switch to the agenda on my screen. Um, sorry, small screen tonight. And um, the first item is approval of minutes from the March 22nd meeting. Those were distributed uh, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, has everybody had a chance to read through those? All right, I see a lot of heads shaking yes. Yes. So, yes. Um, and uh, do we do we know who, I know there were a couple of people who were absent. Can we just have a, I don't know, Jamie, if you want to can let us know who is able or to vote on these minutes so we can, or if, or if somebody has that information. I have, so it was you, Seth, me, Nina, Bobby, David, and Eric, and then Ulysses and Carla as the alternates were all here. Okay. Based on the minutes, at least. Okay. Um, so can we have a, a motion then? Thank you, Michael, uh, to approve those minutes. Michael Aronson, motion to approve the minutes from March 22nd meeting. Bobby Bowker, second that motion. And can we do a roll call? <clears throat> Seth Roy. Aye. Michael Aronson. Aye. Nina Aaron? Aye. Bobby Bowker? Aye. David Chow? Aye. Eric Talbot? Aye. Ulysses Castillo? Aye. All right, motion, the minutes are approved um, and we can move forward. Um, so starting off with uh, new business, um, the first item is, uh, it's a BAR, uh, 03, 2022, 128 Revolutionary Road. And Jaime, if you want to give us the, uh, the overview. Um, yeah, so we, uh, we have an application here for a detached garage. Uh, the garage um, is, you know, just kind of, I think it's a one car garage right next to the property. Um, it's going to need a new curb cut, but that's through a DPW permit. Uh, so today you're know, here really just to kind of talk about it. It's a nice application. Uh, I think that they did submit um, materials, but for whatever reason, we're unable to get it onto the agenda. So I'm um, gonna wanna uh, ask the applicant to just verify the materials of the plan I'm using. Um, and uh, it's a, in the S125 district, uh, Revolutionary Road, kind of a, I don't know if it's, it's not quite Sparta, but it, it's, it's close to the Sparta district. 
right? but it's it's not in the historic so it's it's not the historic preservation board reviewing no okay. all right so uh if maybe we can bring the applicant in and they can go through the the drawings with us yeah if the applicant could raise their hand whoever's here for the applicant We have Kathy Braun. Okay. Kathy, if you could take yourself off mute and uh, share your camera. Okay. Hi there. So if you, um, is there just, is it, it's just one, one person presenting? I see one other hand up. I don't know if that was a, if that's a, a public. Uh, that may be uh, Jamie Blatt, the owner. I believe he was sitting in. Yeah. So hi, Jaime, I don't know if we want to bring, I don't know if you disappeared, Jaime. Yeah, I brought, I just brought him in. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, so uh, go ahead. Why don't you uh, get, introduce your project to us, please. Hi. Um, Mr. Blatt has a property at 128 Revolutionary Road, and we are proposing to put a one and a half car garage um, on the property. Um, the materials that were attached to the agenda are, are correct. I went through them, so those um, appear to be fine. They, there are revised, um, there's a revised curb cut plan and a revised uh, cover sheet for the architecturals um, towards the end of that list, um, as well as the cover letter um, with the description of the project. So yeah, basically one and a half car garage, we're within the, the required setbacks and everything. We just need to change that curb cut. Uh, originally it was a lot wider, we narrowed that uh, as requested, and also the little bit of paving for a turnaround um, was also reduced significantly to what we had originally shown you. Um, and uh, there will be a couple of trees that need to come down. I already spoke to DPW, and as soon as we get our building permit, then we'll go back to DPW and get those permits. Um, so, can, you tell me what, uh, can you tell me which document has the elevation materials? Uh, let's see the elevations. Um, or the one, two, th the third, the third item down on the uh, agenda. The okay. one hundred twenty-eight Revolutionary Road bar elevations. Okay, I have those elevations, but the materials. You mentioned that the materials. Uh, do you have color representations of those materials, or just? No, it's going to be whatever is existing, which is basically white, uh, white siding, everything on the existing house I and mean, typical Victorian uh, white siding, uh, horizontal siding, it will likely not be wood, it will be vinyl. Um, but no, I was not aware that I needed to submit actual materials. They have not been chosen yet in terms of specifics. But it, whatever it is, it will be matching the house. Do we have photographs of the house in, in the? Yeah, scene? in the cover letter on the very last, uh, second to last item on the agenda. That yeah. there, you got it. Okay. Um, and how about and the roof as well? Is the roofing material? Is it a? It's an asphalt. Architectural roof? shingles. Okay, and that will also match what's on the on the main house. Correct. I believe there's a notation on the elevations that said the roof shingles will match the house. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, and again, it just kind of walking through. So the, the trim, the doors, I know there's there's a, a white trim on the existing house and I, it looks like maybe a, it's hard to tell in these photos. There's like a blue accent color on the shutters. Is there, what's the color? Yeah, there won't be any shutters on the windows on the garage. So we don't have to worry about matching those. Um, yeah, so we don't we don't need to to deal with that. So, but all of the trim will be. I'm pretty sure everything's pretty much white, with the exception of the shingles. 
Hey, Kathy, are there any gutters and downspouts on the garage, the structure? Uh, there, there likely will be, yes. There are shell gutters right here. Yeah. Or, yeah, those are gutters, right? Not leaders, but gutters. Gutters. So the gutters are shown, the leaders are not. Okay. Correct. And the those gutters are, just, oh, sorry. yeah, I was gonna say those gutters look kind of like those uh, half circle, you know, um, gutters. Is that what you intend on using something sort of more historic, like a zinc gutter or a copper gutter or galvanized? Um, again, they have not been chosen yet. Um, the existing gutters on the house, let me see what they are. We have a Yankee it. gutter system on that house, right? Can't even see the gutters. No, there's a regular gutters. That's not a Yankee gutter there. No. Yeah, they're regular gutters on the house. I don't believe that they are zinc or 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 copper. They're not original to the house by, by any like means. They're like regular K style gutters. Yes. And the, and the, I mean, the siding on the house, I mean, we keep on saying white, but it's, it's kind of a cream color, which is contrasting with the, the white, the whiter trim, right? I mean, yes. And so you're proposing, to match. House? I'm sorry, you're just, you know, I just want to be clear. So you're proposing to match both of those colors, the, 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 the horizontal siding would be the same color, the garage, right. the, trim. the creamier shade of white, and then the trim would be the, the same white that the trim is on the, uh, on the house. Got it. Hi, May, I interrupted you. No, I was just going to ask, I, you mentioned that you're going to put a vinyl siding. I wanted to verify that that's the same kind of siding that's on the house as well, or does the house not have vinyl siding? Because you're, you're saying you're going to replicate it. Um, does the house have vinyl siding? Um, I, God, you got me on that one. I'm not sure if it is vinyl siding. Um, the owner's here. Yeah, Jamie. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. So thank you everyone for uh, attending uh, to my application and thank you, Kathy, for all your hard work. Um, I would, I, I don't know either, but it's an old home. So it wouldn't surprise me if that was wood and painted, but I don't know for sure. We can, I can ask my uh, contractor to, to look at a sample or the painter to look at a sample uh, and get, get that factual information to you. Uh, I did want to uh, interject one thing about the roof. Um, I did. I have been sitting in intermittently on town uh, council meetings with um, Supervisor Levenberg and uh, everyone, and I learned there about, um, uh, what's it called, geothermal. And so I'm inquiring about um, solar roofing. Uh, a neighbor, uh, two or three uh, homes down has one. So trying to get to as net zero as we can, uh, but if I'm able to get that approved by the board, then I would have that be on both the garage and the main house. Uh, so You're aware that this is the village of Osnin and not the town of Osnin? Uh, yeah, Levenberg I apologize. Is the town. That's okay. The, yeah, Dana Levenberg is over the town of Osnin. Oh, gotcha. And the town has different rules than the village of Osnin. There are different municipalities. Oh, okay, okay, uh, uh, okay. So if you're trying to get an approval in the town of Austin, it's not going to get you very far. Here. Okay, okay. Uh, just because you had brought up the roof, but the point is, it would be it would be matching if I was to go in that direction and gain approval. The home and the the garage would have the same solar, uh, the new solar shingles, not the glass, but kind of a, a black color. Uh, anyway, the neighbor has it. Uh, okay, but if it's not for this, it's not the purview of this. Sorry to bring that up. Right. I think for, from our end, what we're looking at is is just making sure that what's being presented to us is is kind of described completely to the degree that if you know when we grant an approval for a project, we want to know you know that the, the siding is going to be a certain color and a certain material. Same thing with the trim. Same, same thing with the roofing. So that that's that's where these questions are going to. Okay. Um, I mean, your question about uh, solar panels on the roof is all, is pertinent because that would be a different material. Um, and you know how that's installed, you know, it impacts the way that, that the garage would look. Um, 
I think towards that, and I think one, one of the related questions is just street visibility. I mean, it looks like from the site plan, this is kind of right off of, off of the street. Can we just talk about how this will be seen? Okay, so it sounds like the objective is to have it match, that the home and the garage would match each other. So the character of the property and the neighborhood would be maintained. I mean, that would be my goal too, but um, I guess that's more of a question. Yeah, I mean that that's that's what we're looking at right now, and that was the that was also how it was presented to us is that it would match. I think we're just trying to understand yeah. what that really means. Okay. So if the if the siding is wood on the house, and I can verify that, and my apologies for not knowing that off the top of my head. Um, in order to match the siding of the house, does it have to be the same material? Can it be vinyl siding as long as it appears to match the house as opposed I, to doing wood? Could I just put in a plug to say, if you're not going to go with wood, what about hardy board that is more durable and just a better material than vinyl? Sure, it uh, it's also a lot more costly, but we will definitely consider that. Thanks. All right, I'm going to have to sort of jump in here. I apologize. So the 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 application that was presented here was moved forward onto the premise that you knew what the materials of the thing were and that you were going to make use of the same materials. And so I don't know how the board can really make a decision here considering you haven't made a decision about what materials you're actually going to use. We have elevations, but you do really need to have a final decision on these materials. So you're not sure if it's going to be wood or it's going to be vinyl or it's going to be cream or it's going to be white or if it's, you know, you have a lot of unresolved issues here. And so okay. I would, I would recommend that the board um, maybe hold off on this application uh, until the applicant has those decisions made this is this I don't the body you know the, the board's not really responsible for helping you figure out what works you no, have to abs submit absolutely what you absolutely. want approved and then they can review it right and and my apologies for not having those decisions um in the reviews that we did have the you know leading up to this um I was not aware that I needed to know exactly what kind of gutters and exactly what kind of siding I was going to put on this building so uh, again my apologies I was not aware that I needed that actual specific information it's so, fine it was in the application but that's fine okay 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 I so I, I think that, you know, as, as far as, as we stand right now, if you guys can come back to us with those materials, you know, photographs on a, on a sheet, you know, because we're not in person right now, um, you know, we can, we can review those, that information to the degree that it needs to be, can be added to the drawings. Um, and I think we can kind of expedite and have a, have a I think, a, a more complete conversation and, and finalize this reveal. Okay. Um, because I don't think we're, we're going to take any action on this, I think we can hold off on opening the public hearing into this application until um, the next time we, we convene to, to discuss it. Um, and okay. Let's object. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Okay, so thank you, everyone. We'll make sure we have the questions that have been posed to us, and we'll make sure it's complete. Uh, thank you, Ms. Aaron, for the suggestion. That sounds like a really good one. Very good. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so we're going to move on now. What time is it? 724. Um, okay. So we have another uh, BAR. This is 04 2022. This is 38 campground. Um, and Jaime will give the rundown on this one and just kind of for the board members, and I'm sure Jaime will mention this. Um, so this, this house is in the campgrounds neighborhood, which is a kind of, a, it's not a, special historic district, but it's a, it's a special community. Um, and so there, it's already been vetted by that community um, ownership board. Uh, so, so Jaime can talk about that and then we can ask the uh, applicant to come in. Um, yeah, so I, that's, you basically said everything I was gonna say. Uh, the, uh, it's an application for a uh, addition to a house inside the campground condo complex. Uh, they've provided a letter that the application was approved by the Austin Camp Meeting Association Board of Trustees. 
um, as designed. And so because of that fact, uh, I think it, it would be uh, wise is similar to how you deal with uh, HPC um, applications to uh, maybe defer as much as you can. I think you still have to make your analysis, but um, you, you, you wanna be deferential to the, to the condo board here as much as possible, so. Excellent. Um, so we can bring them in. Yep. Um, is the applicant here? That's the better question. <laughs> I don't see them. Um, I don't see anybody raising their. Oh, there it is. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Oh, we do. Okay. And I'm also just going to make a note that Is Isabel has joined us as well. So. Welcome, Isabel. Thank you, Seth. Good, good evening, everybody. All right. OK, so uh, I'm sorry, uh, Jaime, who, who do we have here? We have um, David Arango. He's the um, architect working on this project. Yes, my name is David Arango. I'm working for Rui Arellano. He is the architect of the project in uh, 38 uh, Campo Wood Road. Um, <clears throat> Can I bring the drawings? For... Yes. Okay, thank you. Would it be easier? I mean, Jaime, do you have these drawings that you're ready if, if there's connectivity issues or? Yes, I, I would be, be better that the drawing we submit that. Okay, sure thing. I will bring them in. Yeah. I've, uh, you know, I've got a hardwired gigabit, you know, Connection. So I got the good connection. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is the existing building. Um, you can see this is the, the property. The proposal um, is to add, um, to take down a piece of the, what's currently a smaller addition, and then add on a larger addition. Um, so you can see, uh, let's see if I can pull up. You can see this smaller addition here on the side, um, and they're going to do a large one. So there is uh, a couple of different colors, as you can see. And he's proposing to do the smaller, um, the blue style, but smaller, I guess the smaller shingles. Maybe you want to talk about that, David? Yes. <clears throat> The addition will be, if you see the house in the front, you wanna make an addition in the left side of the house. That means is you, you cover, you know, the existing, you know, we can say this one is like a sunroom or a space over there. And when I convert, if we come, we're going down in the pages, we wanna show what is the addition we have. It's creating like a family room, office space, and like a powder room in that area. The materials we're using for, you know, for the exterior will be same style of windows, matching the existing, and the siding. Uh, one of the suggestions was in the preliminary uh, meeting with the, the town was, uh, you know, try to match all the siding the same because the house has like a, in the back, has like a, we can say is a wood shingles, and the front is vinyl. We want to try to match all the material the same. The owners are agreed to have that thing. The colors are the same. Trims will be the same. We don't make you know like a big impact in the in the in the building. It's only to you know conforming with the staff. Uh, we are uh, conforming with the setbacks and everything, and we are not touching you know like any other stuff. We submit to the 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 meeting the, the the board a letter from the community they approve 
in the previous meeting about the, um, the, the addition and the material that they wanna use. And also the suggestion from the board and the building inspector about the uh, setbacks and everything, because like this is a big community, but all the rules are, like, are applied for them, you know, all the setbacks and then everything will be the same. Everything was submitted and it was an agreement from them, you know, to everything was complying up the code. Can we just go to the elevations real quick, just to yes. see the- uh, If the you change. go down, 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 I think, it, yeah, this one here. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Well, right now where you have the, the, the pitch of the roof kind of continues into that you know, like it looks like an old sunroom or probably a former screened in porch or something. So you're, you're kind of creating a, a perpendicular gable, right? Yes, because if you see the other one, they have like a shed roof against to, to the existing. But now because we try to make the volumetric house like a little looks better, we make like a, a gable again to the house. And where, where are the materials shown or just can we just kind of clarify exactly? Uh, if you see the photos from, the, um, from, I think we submit some photos of, if not in the study we make from the neighbors, we made like a, yep, yep that one. Yeah, you see here, the siding will be that, you know, white trim uh, is like a gray siding and the roof will be the same, you know, style. Some parts of the, the roof was not needed to fix, but, <clears throat> but um, that is part of the job. So you're gonna do the entire roof? We see how is the extent of the work until we get in there, you know. So it'll be that blue and I'm sorry, materially, it was a mix of wood and- Yeah, but if you see here, in the left side of this photo, the west side elevation, the left side is like a wood singles, we can say like a, like a shape. Side. And this one in the right is, is, is the bike. The owners uh, are not agreed to submit, you know, everything will be the same. Um, you mean you need to recite, citing all the house. And what will, I guess, right, that, which is what I understood. So what will the whole thing be recited with, just so we have that for the record? Oh, to getting, you know, uniform, all the, the surfaces, you know, it looks like the same siding, all the houses will be the same. Because the back is, looks like was previously made in that material, and the front was made in, in different material. Now we want to make everything looks uniform. And what is that material? Uh, vinyl. It's a vinyl siding. Got it. Uh, here is the, that is like a eight or 10 inches courses. And the other one is four inches and a half courses. You know, you see here. So, so that in that photo, the, the, the narrower courses are existing vinyl and then the, the wider wood, wood planking is, 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 is the wood. Yep. Okay. Um, and the trim and the trim will be, will it be like a, a vinyl or a PVC trim? Yes. That one is described in the elevations. Okay. All right. Board members, questions? I'm, I'm going to say the same thing. I mean, vinyl to me is just not a great material, but maybe I'm, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 yeah I, I mean, I concur that hardy plank would be more attractive, but I am also cognizant of the cost factor involved here. Yeah, it's like two and a half times the cost to, to three times the cost to go with hardy plank to vinyl. So you have to be price sensitive sometimes when you're making these recommendations, you know? Obviously it's an ideal material, but it is almost three times the cost. Yes, that was, it, it's a nice material, don't yeah. it, but it's very expensive. I've just seen houses, you know, that have had fire 
damage and you just see that vinyl melting and I know and it's supposed to be and warping and it's just yeah I think we have to. I think we have to, think we have to be mindful of of kind of our kind of role in, in evaluating any BAR, and you know we we don't want it to look cheap, um, but we also you know I think that this is consistent with some of the other houses that are around it. It's not you know overly similar. It's not overly dissimilar, um, and it and it's you know this material and this project was vetted by the homeowners association, the condo association as well. I think those are important in. I agree with you, I, but I think that those are important for us to keep in mind as we as we evaluate the project. Yeah, understood. I, I just want to confirm that the uh, the site the siting that's proposed for uh, for the the addition is the is the wider of the two sidings that it's on the house that I th I think it's eight to ten inches as opposed to the other one is like uh, I think you said uh, four inches, uh, four and a half to eight. Four and a half. Yeah. What was it? Could you, could you answer that question for me, David? Yes, no, the, 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 the siding we want to use in is, the, is the front one, is the four and a half. The old siding is in the back, it's like four and 10 inches. Okay. Plus or minus. That okay. is the things we want to replace. We want to use in the same siding you have in the front. If you see the photo again, yep. Jamie. Uh, so David, are you going to reside the whole house with the four inch vinyl? It's all going to be yes. one vinyl around? Okay. That is the thing. Got it. I mean, you know, from the front to the back will be the same. Okay. Yep. It'll be one width, one kind of vinyl around the entire house. This one. You see this yep. one in the front yes. in this elevation? All the house yes. will be the same. Okay. Thank you, David. I, okay. Thank yes. you for clarifying. Hi, I just have one quick question. Yes. Um, so, Jaime, can you go to page, I think it's page five is a section where it shows this crawl space. Looks up here to be a crawl space. No, I think you passed one. No, no, no. Go up, 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 up. No, down. Up. Uh, yes, that one detail right there. So this wall here, this is a masonry wall. Um, is this going to be painted or what? what is the finish that's being exposed here? Oh, we show showing here, but it's a parging wall. You know, like if you see the, in the existing uh, photos, all the walls are a CMU. You know, the foundation walls will Got be it. charging with cement and will be the same thing we have there. Okay. Okay. Um, so gray and gray. All right. Gray varying the high according with the, you know, the, the contours we have there. But, you know, all the things will be parking with cement. Okay, that's fine. I don't have any other questions other than that. All right. Um, one last chance for board member questions before we go to a public hearing. And seeing none, do we have a motion to open up a public hearing on this application? Eric Talbot, I make the motion to open up the public hearing. A second. Minor Aaron, second. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes by unanimous consent. We're now in a public hearing on this application. Um, is there anybody here from the public to speak to this application? And if you are, um, use the hand raise function and um, hi will, hi, Jaime will bring you in one at a time. And I just ask that uh, when you're brought in, if you can just introduce yourself uh, and your place of residence uh, before speaking. I do see one hand. We have Peggy Kennedy coming in. Peggy, if you could unmute yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Peggy Kennedy. I live at 12 Pine Brook Road, which is um, directly below this residence. I'm voicing a concern not with the structure that is proposed. Our family concern is with a extremely large tree, which is at the back of that residence and at a precipice of a hill, which goes down to my home directly below it. Um, this tree is probably extremely old. I would say 40, 50 feet in height. Um, and it, again, it's at the precipice of a hill. And our concern regarding the um, building of this structure 
is damaging any critical root uh, root structure, which is basically holding this particular tree in place. Um, I am normally concerned on heavy wind and rain and storm days that this um, tree could topple down the hill and it would definitely hit um, my home below. Um, again, it's on a hill and, um, you know, dirt with the rain and everything um, kind of damages the root structure as it is, wherever that is kind of um, going down the hill. And we just wanted to voice our concern um, with the building of this structure. What is it going to do to the roots of this very large tree? All right. Uh Th thank you, Ms. Kennedy, for your concern. I, I will point out that so uh, you know, as we review this as this board, we are you know kind of re relatively narrowly focused on the architectural components of it, but we do have a you know a building department which which is you know reviews the project kind of writ large. And Jaime, I don't know if you have any you know feedback or or suggestions of where she she can speak if she has these concerns you know village wise um, to get that concern at least listen yeah, to. So I mean, they're going to have to get a building permit, of course, to do the addition, um, as you just mentioned. Uh, so the building department would go out there and take a look at, you know, any work that's being done. I'm not sure how deep the actual, um, I'm not sure how deep this is, and I don't think that that tree is anywhere near the area, so, and it's at the top of the hill, so that, that tree is most likely down the hill, and it's also um, not near it that close to this addition. There's an existing addition there. This addition is only a few feet larger than the existing addition that's going to be removed. So I, I think it's highly unlikely that this new addition would have any impact on something that's downgrade and uh, not that close. Um, that being said, you know, of course, the building department is going to take a look at the site conditions. Um, I, I think the, the 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 footings. How deep is the footings of this even going, anyways, uh, David? This one is like a cross space, you know, going uh, forty-two inches, you know, under the grade. That means it's not that deep, but. Yeah. You know, I think you know when the the, the building inspector going in the side and double check. You know, we start to dig in. I presume he said, you know, some concern about the trees. You know, I know the trees in the back of the house. I say, you know, quote here is maybe belong to the community, and maybe that is a thing they needed to take care of. You know, everyone, but we can double check and see what is the status of the trees and see if it present any danger for the neighbors. We try to resolve something, you know, between the owners and the community. I, I, I like that idea. I, I don't want to, I don't want to get this conversation, you know, too far off track. Um, okay. So if, if that, if that conversation can be, you know, can happen between neighbors, whether that's the condo owner or the, the condo association, um, I think that's probably the, the best venue for this. Uh, but but thank you, Ms. Kenny, for for bringing your concern. Um, I think this is certainly one way to, to be heard. So, um, very good. Thank you. Just a real quick uh, point of clarification, uh, Ms. Kennedy, you're not in the campgrounds, correct? That is correct. Okay, so the campgrounds. Um, if you go to the agenda, you'll see that there's a letter from the campgrounds. That might be the best way to get a hold of them. Um, if you have questions that you want to take directly to the campgrounds board, okay. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you very much. Um, I do see another hand. Um, if this is about uh, the, the campgrounds project, I think there's Fred. And again, just as you come in, if you can introduce your, yourself and your place of residence before, you, before speaking about this project. Fred, if you could speak, you get to unmute yourself. Fred, we still can't hear you. Fred, if you could just hit unmute. Sorry, I, I hate that my mistake. I'm not part of the uh, meeting right now. Okay. Yeah. I think he said he had his hand, he put the hand up by mistake. So he's, oh. he's not oh, Sorry, sorry. That's okay. Um, all right, so are there any other hands? Um, I don't see any other hands. Jaime, do you have anything else that I'm missing? 
and no, there, no, no other not. emails or comments submitted electronically, correct? Fine. Okay. Um, can I have a motion at this point from the board to close the public hearing on this application? Michael Bobby. Aronson. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Bobby. Michael oh, no. Aronson, motion to close the public hearing. Bobby Balker, second that motion. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes. The public hearing is closed. Um, I think we've you know, got enough information on this project, in my opinion. Um, so I think at this point we could move forward um, you know, with, with a vote on the application. Um, I think everything was clearly documented. I think we should just you know, be clear that the, uh, the request is for the vinyl, the, the four inch vinyl siding, which is existing on the building to be carried out through the new addition, as well as, as the other portions of, of the building that were sited differently. Um, so with that in mind, do we have a motion from the board? Eric Talbot, I make the motion. Michael Aronson, second. To be clear, that's a, a motion to approve the approve the. Uh, Pardon me. Let me clarify. I make the motion motion to approve the app, uh, the BAR application for thirty eight Camp Woods. And we have Michael second. So can we do a roll call? Tara's muted. Nina Aaron. Aye. Michael Aronson. Aye. Bobby Bowker. Aye. Isabel Nguyen. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. David Chow. Aye. Seth Roy. Aye. And do we need Ulysses Castillo? No, I think we have we have all other board members. Yeah, I don't think we, yeah. <laughs> Great, so the motion ca carries uh, seven to zero. Um, so good luck with your project. Um, okay, thank you very much. How are right. you doing that? You too. Great, okay. Um, Moving on, uh, the next item on the agenda is BAR 13-2021. This is 29 Birch Court. Um, and I'll let Jaime, I'll let you give you uh, give our uh, description here. Um, yeah, so the applicant has proposed a detached carport. Initially, they came in with an attached carport. Um, they had to request a zoning variance for that. That zoning variance was denied. Um, so the new application they provided is zoning compliant. Um, I think it's, this is probably a good time for us to talk a little bit about the, um, the, the role of the, of the BAR here and sort of the limits of what you can actually deal with in a BAR application. So Linda, I don't know, would you uh, like to handle that or do you want me to? I can do it if you'd like. So your your role in acting as the BAR is limited, um, and you're really you know looking at the architecture and design of the building, um, and you are determining um, only if it would be detrimental to the desirability, property values, or development of the surrounding surrounding areas, so as to cause one of the harmful effects set forth um, in the code. And in considering that, you look at whether there is excessive similarity um, or excessive dissimilarity or inappropriateness in relation to the established character um, of other structures. And the, deleterious, the effects that you have to find in order to disapprove an application are that it impairs the benefits of occupancy of existing property in such area impairs the stability and value of both improved and unimproved real property in such areas, prevents the most appropriate development and use of such areas, contributes to the degeneration of property in such areas with attendant deterioration of conditions affecting the health, safety, and general welfare of the community, and contributes to the diminution of the taxable value of real property in such areas and its ability to support the municipal services provided. The code also specifically says that your finding cannot be based on personal preference as to taste or choice of architectural style. Um, so that's a quick summary. Obviously, the, the full jurisdiction and what you're to look at can be found in your code. Um, happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Does anyone have any questions for Linda? I know this is something we've, we've discussed at length uh, 
you know, recently. <laughs> Every once in a while, you need a little BAR primer. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, um, and and Jaime, I just want to reiterate. So this has been reviewed by building staff, and and there are no other variances or anything that we're waiting for. This is kind of as of right, as determined by staff. Yeah, so there's a there's a couple of caveats, not not really caveats, but sort of nuances to the code. So. The code says that the, um, any structure has to be five feet away from the property line. However, the eaves of a roof can't hang over that five foot setback. So in the instance here, uh, the posts of the carport are within the five foot, are, are, are not in the five foot setback. So they're right at the, the edge of that. The eaves of the roof actually extend into that five foot setback. So I think it ends up being closer to like three and a half feet away from the property line. Um, the property is going to include an increase in some impervious surface, um, including the pavement underneath the carport, as well as a, a strip of uh, paving alongside of it. Uh, that pavement is not a part of this application. Uh, it's on the materials, but it, it, uh, the, the Board of Architecture is not reviewing uh, anything related to that. The, they are still compliant. They have not exceeded any of their um, coverage on the property. Um, the application also has materials related to the uh, drainage issues, that is also not part of this application. So uh, you can't really add any conditions related to drainage because this is a bar, uh, BAR only application. So the only thing that you can do is um, deal with the BAR stuff as outlined by Linda. Um, okay, and, and just to take that a step back, I know you, you mentioned that, that piece about the overhang on the eaves, but, that's already, but that has been reviewed by staff and it's been determined it by staff. So it's not, it's not an interpretation. I mean, we don't make those interpretations anyway, but it's not something that's being forwarded to any other board for review. No, that's right. It's not. It's it's been reviewed by the board, uh, by the building inspector. The building inspector determined it was compliant with code. Um, so it's not for review at this point. All right. So uh, can we bring the applicant in? Uh, if the applicant could raise their hand, because I know they there's a bunch of people on their team. Um, and um, who's who's a uh, who's taking charge in this this one? Hi, um, Stephen, uh, my boss should be on just uh, any second. And uh, this is Fred, uh, apparently raising the hand at the right time. I work for, with Stephen Kretschmann Architects. Great. <laughs> I have another STAPC host, but they're not unmuting. Uh, yeah, no, that's my uh, computer. Uh, I'm using my phone for the because the uh, the video doesn't work on my computer. Even with the Carmen, they're not muting me. Yeah. Hey, do we, who's uh... Carmen Davis is the uh, owner. The owner. And and do we have? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Who's so who's who's taking lead on this? Is he? Uh, Stephen Kretschmann. Is he I'm coming here? on? He's not here. Ah, give us a minute. He's... Um, Sorry, it's no technology for this, us. This should be getting in right now. Oh, wait. You need if you need more time, let us know because we we have we have a lot going on. We could we can jump ahead. Well, I, I think yeah. We should be on. If you guys are ready, ready, able to present the project to us, but um... he, right. he, he, said, he said his wife's computer is trying yeah. to get. He's yeah. trying to get on with his wife's computer. Hannah, yeah, did, did, um, did you accept the attendee did list? I'll, I'll give you just you know, half a minute here because we we need to move. We need to keep moving here. Yeah, but, uh, we apologize. Yeah, but I'm saying when you zoom in, did you uh, press accept the meeting when you zoom? Sure. 
Um, if he's on, tell him to raise his hand so that Tommy can let him in. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask them to do it right now. They're just called there. There's a Hanley Crashman that keeps coming in and out. I don't know if there's like a, a connection yeah. issue. But, you know, if there is a connection issue, it might make sense for them to figure out that connection issue and come back to them. Yeah, no, agreed. I, we, we can't do this back and forth right now. I think we can we can move on to the next yeah. agenda item. Actually, the only question, actually, my question right now is do we have. Yeah, you have to raise the hand to for them to. Yeah. Are they here? Okay. Uh, is is Hanley Cratchman uh, on the uh, uh, it, it, It's coming in and out, they said. Yes, it's not getting a, a good connection. So no, there they are. Jaime, can you let them in? Yeah, uh, there you are. Hanley, raise your hand and, uh, and right, put yourself right. on mute. Okay. All right. Let's, 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 yeah. let's, so, see the video? Can we see the video? Yeah. yeah. So I place on. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Can, can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh, sorry, I'm I'm on as my wife. Uh, that's why uh, Jaime didn't recognize me. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks for your patience, um, Robin. Can you go right away to screen share so we don't waste any more time? Um, please. Okay, um, just go slowly with me, Robin. Uh, this is the house. This is 29 uh, Birch Court. And in the left-hand uh, corner, you can see uh, an aerial uh, showing the neighboring houses. It's a subdivision. It was all built around the same time uh, within the last uh, 20 years, uh, Birch Court. And um, we uh, are adding an, an as of right, uh, we are proposing to add an as of right accessory carport to the right hand side. Next next slide, please, uh, Robin. Um, on the right hand uh, slide, the proposed site plan um, shows, um, maybe can you enlarge it a little bit, Robin, so they can see in t the tone? Yeah, there's the existing driveway. Uh, we've added a little sliver uh, so that uh, we can um, uh, drive right into the um, um, freestanding uh, freestanding uh, carport, and um, the the reason that they want a uh, this is an elderly couple, and they're planning for the eventuality or the possibility that they 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 might need handicap access. They want a, the there's it's a so called two gara car garage, but it really isn't if you're if the door is uh, if if there's a handicapped car and access so only one car fits in there and they'd like to have a uh, uh, second car under under roof. Um, um, uh, the shape of the roof, uh, what we'll see in the elevation, it's a gable with a flat piece. Um, in the back, in the rear yard, um, this was uh, filed and approved. Um, there is a little uh, uh, as of right shed uh, for tools, tool shed. And there is a um, an, a, a um, semi or a partial circle um, pergola. Um, the, 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 they, they like to plant, they're planters, they like to have gardens. Uh, so that's what we're preparing for. Next slide. I, 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 I want to be quick. I'm sorry, is somebody saying something? Uh, th this is too detailed. Um, let's see, um, do we have another drawing? Uh, may maybe the west elevation and the south elevation, you can um, see that's a flag there. You can, the, let's see, um, the, Um, the, the architecture is meant not to match um, the front porch, which has a Doric column sitting on a, a pedestal. Um, we couldn't get that height, um, and so we've decided to um, treat it um, like a, um, a porch, uh, which, which they have actually in the back. So it has um, straight columns. There's no Greek columnate columnation. Uh, the asphalt 
uh, all the materials will match the existing. And here are some details on the right hand side with some uh, lighting and the, the elevation facing the uh, neighbor uh, has um, a, some some trim uh, that's meant to um, uh, be a structure for uh, climbing vines. Uh, uh, do we have a rendering? Maybe we should just go to that and then show some pictures in the back, maybe a picture in the back to show the kind of architecture we're matching or just show all the pictures um, yeah, that you have there quickly. Okay, that there um, on the right hand side of that uh, image, I don't know if you can point to it is, um, is, is the current uh, screen and porch. And then there is the unpainted uh, pergola, which will all be um, stained um, a, a darker color. Um, and then you can see under underneath a, a very small um, a prefab uh, shed. Next next image. Um, what do, what else do you have there, Robin? Um, there's one from the front. front. Just just, oh, yeah. just show them all quickly. That's just good. Okay. Um, that's, Sorry. that's Sorry, okay. That's okay. That's before any work is. That's that's the existing condition now, uh, without the uh, pergola. Next. Okay. Next. Good. Did you want to do the rendering? Sure. Just do rendering. Just. There you go. Um, there's a few images uh, of the proposed. Uh, carport uh, with the green screen and um, from the view two, I think shows how the uh, proposed uh, carport relates to the um, a shed construction in, in the rear with the sticks the sort of stick construction the roofing materials are the same um, and then there's no ceiling um, underneath it um, it's kind of an open open structure similar to the the porch structure that you see see in the rear. Um, you can, it's quite it's set back uh, quite a few feet, um, almost eighty feet from the from the street. Um, okay, uh, proposed materials. There's the little board because um, for its paint the tr the trim and the materials ma match the existing house. I mean, there's no walls, so there's not much to match. Okay, anything else? If there's uh, uh, TV. TV. You need to mute your computer. Okay, is that better? Um, yeah, that's better. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Does that mean yeah, that you that haven't heard me the whole time, or? No, no, we heard you just fine. But every time okay. I try to speak, I'm hearing. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I heard somebody trying to talk, but I, I didn't know. Okay. Sorry about so that. Can, no, it's okay. So if we can just zoom in on the material list, then I actually at this point would like to ask the board members if, uh, for for comments, um, so we can be clear about everything here. Um, so that that structure, that freestanding structure next to it, in those images, that's just a it's a white painted wood. Yeah, uh, guys. That why why is that shown there? Is that a precedent? Yes, precedent. Okay, okay. So the one on the right is. Is a similar carport structure that, uh, yeah, it, it identifies the ceiling uh, support. Um, uh, it identifies the um, columns, uh, but the precedent so, uh, here is to show that the structure itself is all going to be trimmed in white. Okay, thanks, Fred. The actual structure is um, steel, though. Okay, so it's a white, so, so it's a white painted steel. Is that a, like a shop painted, like a powder coat, or? Yeah, it's going to be a structural a steel, and then we're going to clad it with uh, azac, a white material. Um, but in essence, that's um, it's like a gazebo intent. And nothing shop, nothing shop painted for this for this project. Yeah. It's all field painted. Board members. I have a couple of quick questions. I'm a little confused. Is the pergola already there or is that going to be built? It's already there. Oh, okay. Because there was one shot 
that we saw that it wasn't there. And I guess you, you it's, don't. It's, it's not part of the application. Uh, right, I understand. Um, um, yeah. I guess it would have been helpful for me. I don't think it's in the drawings to see how this structure would look within the context of the adjacent property. Um, and, I, and I guess you are also extending the, the paving a little bit on that the green area that's leading up to the um, to the structure. But I mean, I, I see the rendering, but I don't see it in the context of, of the adjacent property. And, and um, I'm just... I, curious as to how that would look. Yeah, I agree. And Michael, I would like to see that too, how it looks compared to the house next door. Is there, um, uh, do we have a photo uh, from the street view, uh, Robin? Yeah, I should have a good aerial photo here. We can see no, all no, the No, no, a street houses. view. I like okay. to make a point. Yeah, hold on one second. Sure. Is that good? Uh, no, the from the from the other side, I think. I just yeah. So uh, a little bit more to the left. Yeah, one. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So uh, the development, the way it was uh, designed, uh, was that the uh, garage was set back towards the back of the of the property of the house, and um, an angle. So that in order to help um, reduce, I guess, the massive look of the of the house, or at least hide it individually. So when you see the black car, that's what we add in. The it's actually almost the same. Visually, would be out almost the actual width of that black car that you see sitting in there, and that's really to the extent that the carport is going to be added, because obviously we cannot really go beyond that point due to the required uh, setbacks. You know, it's five feet away from, uh, from, the, from the property line. But um, th that's really all within the context of the house. So obviously we don't have a rendering, but if we were to sketch something over, over this, it would just show that there's uh, uh, the additional roof over, over that car that's parked. Right, the carport is going to be to the right of the garage, or is it going to be? Yes, in the, it's going to be to the it's right. It's a little of the bit setback, okay. yeah, from the face of it. Yes. And what's the diameter and the length and the width of the carport? Was it like twenty by twenty, ten by ten? No, 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 no. Go, 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 go. Don't, don't uh, guess. Just uh, go to the, go back to the site plan that we showed before to show the house and with the dimensions. Yeah. Yep. No, the plan, plan dimensions, plan, only plan. The first image. Yes. Okay. Go. Okay. Uh, do you want the large pen? Or the, yeah. The side pen? So, so the the slope roof itself it's about um, I want to round it off from ten foot six to eleven feet mm -hmm. by about eighteen feet deep. Is really the area to cover a car. Got it. And the, the part of the neighbor's house that's close to this is his garage, right? It's not like yeah. obstructing any kind of line of sights or views from the neighbor at all. Right. Really garage, that's right. Yeah. It's garage. It's a map. It's mapped garage to garage. And then the other side is flipped too. the same thing. Got it. Okay. I'm good with it. Are there other board members, comments, questions? Um, I have a question. Go for it. Um, can you go back to renderings number one and number two? Thank you. <clears throat> there is a flat roof between the carport and the house, correct? Yes. It seems to me the flat roof is very, very high up to the bottom of the window that's shown on view number two. What well, happens if it snows and the wind blows, would that flat roof accumulate enough snow to block a part of the window? Well, first of all, the, the, thank you for that question, 
um, the the structure is not is detached. So there's a a 12 inch plus space between the flat roof and the wall of the existing house. So there's it's open to the sky. Do you want to go to that plan? And it's two feet. The sill, the roof, and the the dimension and height from the flat roof to the sill of the windows is a, is about two feet. I see. Uh, can you? That doesn't show the. Robin, can you go back to the flip back to the original to the draw? Yes, the yes. Thank you, and show the dimension. The clearance between the two. Yes, one foot three. It's an open. Yes. Uh, there's yes. no physical attachment to the house. Right. No. Yes. Otherwise, okay, it, I, otherwise it requires a variance. Well. Uh, I understand. Thank you. Okay. I guess I'm just wondering what is the function of that flat roof portion of the structure? Um. To, well, to provide, can you uh, zoom out a little bit, Robin? I want to show. Yeah. Sorry. Um, no, I want to show. Can you go back to the plan? I need to show the Sorry. doors, Robin. Right. Okay, go back to the left side there. I want to show the relationship of the existing house. Okay, so. Um, there's a few gates and access ways. Um, there's a man gate and a service gate. There's a there's an existing fence, and we're going to put some doors in it. Uh, but the triangular piece of flat roof provides them a little more coverage, and it provides um, uh, not exactly, but a, a a way to get from the existing garage in the back of the house underneath the pergola, and then into the a uh, car. It's not 100% covered, but um, of all the weather, but of some weather. You see what I mean? There's a path. Now it's a covered pathway. It uh, it uh, it attaches the carport more to the garage and to the house and to the um, covered walkway. Yeah. I, I just want to be clear here, so that the board understands. Because I think what you're saying is a little confusing. That per it's a pergola. It is totally uncovered. And it cannot be covered, otherwise it would have a, you know, a snow load, and that would be covered by the building permit. So to be clear, that pergola is just an actual pergola, which will forevermore have to remain uncovered. Yes, thank you. I'll make sure that you're clear on that. So because you're saying it's partially covered, but you're you're adding a little bit of extra coverage next to the carport, and leading to a completely uncovered and to ever to forever remain uncovered pergola. Yeah. Um, Turn the pergola into like a covered walkway. Well, okay. Um, I'll be clear. I, 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 maybe I spoke too fast. Um, it'll, it's, I said it's, what I meant is that it's covered to um, the shade, shade and sun. It'll have vines, um, but it's, it's open to the sky um, and open to, you know, rain and snow. Okay, got it. Are there any other comments or questions from the board before we open this up to the public? Okay, I, I think that's for the sake of moving forward, if we can have a motion to open up a public hearing on this application. Michael Aronson, motion to open a public hearing on the item. I second that motion. Okay. Um, and um, and uh, uh, that echoing, echoing again. again. Okay. Um, so, any objections to opening up the public hearing? No objections. The motion passes by unanimous consent. Um, I'm now going to ask if there's anybody here from the public to speak to this application. If you can raise your hand, um, and then we will let you in again. This will be a um, you know, it just as you come in, please state your name, your place of residence uh, for the record uh, before uh, speaking about the BAR portion of this application. So I think we have at least one hand up so far. We have several now. Um, Jaime, do you want to start letting folks in one at a time? 
sorry, we have Miguel Hernandez. If you could uh, unmute yourself, Miguel. Hi, uh, this is Miguel Hernandez. I'm at uh, 10 North Water Street. I just have a ge very general question. Uh, do I understand correctly that there is a two, gar two car garage and then a third um, carport? Is that right? Is that the question for the applicant? Yes, a question for the applicant. We now have a two car garage and then they're, they're adding a carport as well. So in other words, they can accommodate three cars. Is that right? You're muted, uh, Stephen. You're muted. Thank you, Hami. So sorry, technical problems. Uh, the, the, it's a very, it's a, it's called the two car garage, but two cars don't fit. You can't open the doors. Uh, you can't open even any of the doors with, uh, and get out. So only one car r actually fits. And um, they're an elderly couple, and they want to be able to have um, uh, handicap access in the future. So one, it'll, it, the existing garage will accommodate one car. And then the carport will accommodate a second car. OK, thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Um, all right. Next hand. Next, we have David Turiano. Um, I'm here representing uh, Ms. Graziano, Elaine Graziano. And um, Hami, if it's OK, maybe she could uh, first, if that's all right. Otherwise, I'm happy to chime in, but I'd like to. Um, are, are you going to be speaking on her, on her behalf? That is correct. All right. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm happy for them you, for you to both be at the same time. So you can thank uh, you. Just speak one at a time and just uh, yeah introduce yourself and uh, yeah, I guess your clients uh, place it. Elaine, if you want to start off there, I want to hear this. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Elaine Graziano. I'm in the house uh, immediately next door to this um, project. Um, I submitted you know a letter and some information and I understand some of it has really to do more with building code than this. So I just want to say, I guess, um, that the main thing is they're building a carport in a neighborhood where there are no carports. They don't exist. It is a two car garage. Everybody in the neighborhood has two cars in their two car garages. My neighbor has two small to one smaller and one medium SUV in that two car garage. So just to be clear, it is a two car garage. You can use it as a two car garage. All the other 17 or 18 houses in the neighborhood do so. We all have multiple cars. We use our driveways, we use our garages. There's never been a need for an additional carport you know, to add on to it. So um, when the house was purchased, they knew it was a two car garage. They knew they had four cars when they moved in. So that, that's the way the house was when they built it. Um, this went through the zoning board, which was denied for an attached structure. Um, and so now the letter of the law is that they can build an unattached structure within five feet of, feet of my property line. Um, but it's not really in the spirit of the law to build a structure of this size and add basically a third, like a third car garage, if you will, carport. Um, alongside the house, which is now not only going to be five feet by my property line, but I understand from this, the overhang will bring it three and a half feet from my property line. It's just, I feel it's going to affect my property value, the property values of the neighbors. This is just not in the spirit of the law. The appearance of this is, is going to be not attractive at all from the street and from my perspective as far as light and blocking views and just encroaching and making it seem so crowded, especially in addition with the pergola and the shed, which have already been built and don't need, you know, any variances. I'm, I'm, I'm clear on that and aware of it, but the, the overall overarching project is, is quite overwhelming. Um, so I, you know, I don't know what what you guys weigh in on and what is in your realm, but you know that these are my major concerns. Along with, is there? And I have a question: is there there the elevation of this is higher than my property? 
Will, how do they address the grade? Will there be a retaining wall? How are they going to level that to do that? Or will it just be a sharp slope after that level part on the five feet between that and my property? I'm just, I'm a little unclear on what exactly the plan is for that. Um, and I know Jaime, when you introduced the project, we we're trying to break up because I'm, you know, I'm trying to understand too what, you know, what we're looking at to review and what we're not. But the driveway extension is, yeah, is so not... there's a, kind of a couple of follow-up points to um, what was mentioned here. So the the code is written that it does limit the percentage of the side yard or the percentage of the rear yard that can be utilized for um, um, accessory structure. This is an accessory structure. Uh, because it's carport, it falls under the BAR, um, whereas the shed, because of the size of the shed and the pergola, uh, because of what it is, is not uh, something that would fall under the BAR. Um, this, um, you know, carport is considered an accessory structure, and, you know, I can't speak to the spirit of the law, but the law um, uh, does state that you can, you know, without a variance, put up to 30% of the um, side yard uh, towards accessory structures, as long as they don't meet a host of other criteria, uh, which were all reviewed for the purposes of this. Um, in regards to the, um, you know, any potential regrading that's going to have to take place, I haven't seen a regrading plan. Uh, that's a building code issue, but um, just sort of anecdotally, as I pass the property, I mean, uh, it, it sort of levels and that there's a steep drop and then it levels out again to the neighbor's yard down the hill. I, I'm not 100% sure that there will, you know, based on the plans that I saw in my, you know, visit in the field, that there will be any real changes. Um, but that's something that the building department will have to look at uh, once they actually have um, an application in front of them if the board uh, does approve this. So what, what you think you can look at here are uh, similarity uh, dissimilarity and inappropriateness. Uh, well, Elaine just said it's very dissimilar, right? It's the only one out of 18 homes to have a carport. So that is. Um, you know, I'll, I'll leave the, uh, I will leave that up to the applicant to, to make a determination about whether it's similar, dissimilar, um, or inappropriate. But I would note that there is. Um, I mean, that's what we should be voicing our opinion on, right? But, but, VAR, but again, it's not just whether it's similar or dissimilar, it's the impact of that similarity or dissimilarity. Okay. Yeah. There, you know, I think what might be helpful is if I can sort of show everybody some street views of the property. They, uh, you know, yeah. they actually did not submit those, but it might be helpful to see that there is some variance in what's going on in these properties. Uh, the one thing that is pretty much the same is that they almost all have the exact same footprint. Uh, they have some adjustment in how the front of the property goes. If you can mute yourself, Mr. Kretschmann, because you're, you're just making a lot of noise. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to pull up the... Uh, um, pull up the street views and then that'll give you a sense of what's going on in the area. And uh, I, if, if there are no more questions from, um, yeah. I don't want to start this conversation with the um, commenters here. They can, if you want to bring them back later, you can. Yeah. Ms. Graziano, uh, yeah, it, and uh, if you, you, yeah, we'll put you out into the attendees room for the moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is the Birch Court property. Um, we're talking about uh, this is the wait a second. I think maybe I'm yes, right. So 
you can see here, there's a little bit of a hill here. Um, actually, no, I'm not. Is this 29? If you can help me, uh, Mr. Cratchman, I'm trying to remember. Yes, that's 29. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. And I think this is the Graziano property right here. Yes. Um, and this picture doesn't show it well, but there's actually a bit of a, a bit of a steeper slope um, here. And this area now has, there's some bushes in this area that are not currently visible. Uh, because this image is from 2013, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but let's ride around the block a little bit. You can just kind of see what's going on at some of the adjacent properties. Um, so this person here uh, has some, you know, kind of a walkway that they've added um, to the side of the property. Um, so they've taken up a little bit of extra space over there. This person over here has added a retaining wall and extended out the, the you know, sort of the area to the side. So you can see that's something that's is a little different in the area. Um, so keep going down the street. And again, they're all essentially, you know, the same footprint with the, um, yeah, no, the houses are very similar with a couple of different, couple of different houses. Right One of the properties has, a, has an entire addition, I think, in the back. Yeah. But I don't know that matters. Yeah, so you can see this area here has been added. There's a you know large, you know paved area next to it. Um, this one here uh, has a smaller paved area next to it. Um, this uh, one here has kind of a smaller paved area next to it. Looks like there's something going on back there uh, as well. Um, I. Remember, there was some, you know, some people had um, you can see here, there's, you know, additional pavement here. It's been added uh, to the side of the property. Similar there. Um, there is a basketball court going on uh, down here. I think there's somebody with a fenced in you know, a large fence. Yep. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think we, I think, we, you know, this is helpful. Um, I know there are a couple of other people here from the village that are still raising their hands. Um, so there's some variances, yeah. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, I think that, I think it is helpful to kind of do this little walk around. I just want to kind of keep, keep moving forward. Um, so um, I think Robert, Charnas, and then if I see that Ms. Graziano and her engineer still have their hands up, and I think if, if after Mr. Charnas speaks, if they want to give them another, um, I'd say two minutes after Mr. Charnas um, before moving forward. Um, but if Mr. Charnas can come in. Yeah, Mr. Charnas, if you just want to turn yourself up. Can, can you hear me? We can, yes. Yes. So uh, three things I, I, I wanted to say. I was um, surprised to hear that everyone um, in Birch Court has two cars in their garage and there's no problem. Uh, my neighbors at one Birch Court do not have uh, both cars in their garage. Uh, they have two SUVs and they park one outside. Um, and when I asked them why they did that, they said it was, it was just too tight to do that. Uh, the second thing has to do with a statement uh, about real estate values. Um, I can't comment on any other property. I know when I spoke to my real estate agent uh, about this project, the answer I got was it was unlikely to have any effect uh, on, on the, the evaluation or the valuation of, of my property. Um, and the, the third point I'd, I'd like to say, I don't, I don't live next door. Um, I live across the street and, and up a little bit. Uh, I'm not directly concerned I would pass by uh, and, and just to say that um, from an aesthetic point of view, um, this, this doesn't concern me greatly. It's, it's a personal opinion uh, for whatever it's worth. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. Charnas. Okay. Um, so I think at this point, if we can let Ms. Graziano and Mr. Uh, Turiano back in, but just because we've um, you know, still have a bunch of things to talk about tonight, um, including others, if you guys can limit 
your comments uh, combined to, to two minutes. Um, so, I, and I don't know if, if Ms. Graziano, or if you want to let Mr. Tiriano speak or- Fine, you're good. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Do you, yeah, do you want to say anything, okay. David? Well, I'm just going to um, add a few comments, if I may. And one of them is, um, you know, all those other houses, 17 or 18 other houses had paved areas, retaining walls. Um, I think Ms. Graziano would be happy to have a paved area there. The cars, that there's hard scrabble there right now. They're parking there. Um, I think there is no comparison to fences, pavements, and retaining walls as there is to a carport. Um, so with that being said, I, I would find that um, there is a desirability to the property, particularly Ms. Graziano's property. Um, <clears throat> one of the charges also is what they call cubicle content, volume. When you get add up the volume of this carport, the triangular connection piece, the shed, the um, pergola, the house itself, it's a large amount of volume. And this board does have uh, something to say about size. Uh, cubicle context is one of the charges, uh, one of the findings that this board can make. Um, it's large, it's large, it's high, and it's sitting right on top of, the, of Ms. Graziano's property. Um, secondly, I'm just gonna, there's no indication of 3.5 foot on the plan. Everything says five foot. I don't know where uh, the deviation came between three and a half feet and five feet. I understand there's an overhang. The plans don't reflect that, at least in plan view. It shows setbacks of five feet. I would say that's a flaw. I would also say that I would like to, I, I know it's not your board's jurisdiction. I would imagine it's the building inspector who made the determination that a, a 1.5 foot overhang is permitted when you're already encroaching into a side yard area. Typically overhangs are permitted for your, your, when you're respecting um, setback areas. But when you're already into the setback area, um, there has to be an absolute number. And I would suggest that five foot is the absolute setback. Again, the plans do not have a 3.5 foot dimension on them. Everything in plan view, uh, floor plan, roof plan, and everything shows a five foot setback. Um, on drainage, I did have comments that were issued. I know it's not this board's jurisdiction, but just to give uh, a quick story where they were at the zoning board, my office did give some drainage comments. Um, actually, the um, architectural, or I'm sorry, the zoning board also did weigh in with some comments. They did retain, um, Joe Chimelli, who's here tonight, his firm Keller Sessions, who also um, issued a series of uh, comments. Um, both of those comments were addressed. And I just want to let the board know that, um, you know, they're, while it's not your jurisdiction, they so far have gone on the unnoticed. Um, and this is the village's consulting engineer having great comments uh, coupled together with um, my findings of October 12, 2021. So there are comments out there. So I, I think Hami said that. Uh, past muster with drainage. I, I believe it's within the building department's purview for chapter 227 I, to take a hard look at this. And we'll make sure that that happens, but- um, Thank you. To thank run to get around the drainage. Sure, Yanni, I'm sorry, because we're, 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 we're past that two minutes that I gave you. Um, and, and I- Two minutes is a little um, and I, for a public I hearing, sir. And I just um, thank you for your time though, and I will wrap up at two and a half, two minutes is, is, uh, is not a public hearing time. I, it, time. It's not a lot of time, but we're we're allowing you guys back in after the, after your first visit. Um, um, very good. So right now, I, there were a couple. I actually do have a couple of questions um, just for for Linda. I mean, the uh, uh, Mr. Tiriano spoke about cubicle content. If you can just explain, you know, what what relevance that may have to our conversation. So that is one of the factors that. Um, the code allows you to look at when you're considering excessive dissimilarity. Um, it's sort of an interesting concept, cubicle content here, because there's no walls. You have an open structure, um, an open roof structure. So I'm not sure um, if that would even be considered cubicle content. Um, it's, so, um, but it is just listed as one of the things that you look at in determining excessive dissimilarity. Okay, thank you. Um, and I also just, you know, I know that this project has gone through different iterations, but right now the, the, the BAR application that we're looking at is, is not looking at the drainage issues um, or the other engineering concerns that may have been brought up um, under different applications or, or different projects. Uh, yeah, we, um, so Joe's uh, Keller Sessions memo uh, was prepared on behalf of the zoning board um, when they were looking at the application that was in front of them at that time. So he, he has that information there was submitted 
Um, you know, the new application uh, is really a, just a DAR only application. So it is different than what was being, uh, you know, presented in the past. So we, we did keep those there as a matter of public record and we acknowledge that, um, you know, had the zoning board dealt with this, that this applicant likely would have been required to do a lot of drainage work. I'm, I'm not even sure that the applicant doesn't already intend to do some of that drainage work, but it's not um, something that the Board of Architecture Review is dealing with right now. Got it. Um, all right, do we have any other, I don't, any other hands up um, in the attendees list? I don't think there's anybody else here. Uh, all right. Um, board members, uh, you know, just, I mean, at, at this point, we should you know, move forward one way or another as far as um, I think, you know, we've we've seen the application, we've seen the materials, you know, we I think I've have the, the, the question before up is, is pretty clear. We're still in a public hearing right now. Um, do we feel comfortable uh, closing a public hearing right now? We do we want to, you know, or is this something that that we see as more of an adjournment? I, I, I don't see anything else that we can ask this applicant based on what's already been provided to us um, as far as our vetting of, of what's been presented. I mean, if there's no one else from the public, I guess we could close the public hearing, right? I'm comfortable with that. Um, can we have a motion? Um, Bobby Balker making a motion to close public hearing. Nine, Aaron, second. Anybody on the board object? No objections. The motion passes. The public hearing is closed. Um, okay. So, you know, any kind of final thoughts? I mean, I, you know, these. The way that I'm looking at this is, you know, it's, you know, I don't see a structure like it um, on, on the block. I don't see that it's, you know, try, I'm trying to divorce the project from the from the zoning concerns, the setback concerns, you know, which kind of live in another world. But as far as kind of as, as aesthetic impact, you know, in similarity to similarity size, you know, we talked, you know, the cubicle content question. Um, you know, to you know, does it rise to the degree of something that would that would be kind of objectionable? You know, based on the criteria that Linda set out at the front. I mean, it looks you know it's kind of in keeping with the houses that are around. You know, Jaime's walkthrough is helpful. Um, you know, just kind of in terms of our our, our limited oversight, I, I don't see any. I personally don't see anything. Um, you know, I I think um, you know it's it's worth mentioning here. Um, I asked the building inspector if the applicant was to put in one of those you know costco carports that are made out of metal frames and staked to the ground would they need a permit and he said no they wouldn't need a permit they wouldn't need bar approval they wouldn't need anything the reason they're here today is because they they're, they're putting in a permanent structure that's an accessory structure so the farther you get away from a permit, the more likely you are to encounter something that's even more egregious and hideous. Um, so I think that's you know just food for thought here. Good point. It is a good point. It's helpful. Yeah, very helpful. Other reactions, guys? I mean, I I, I really appreciate. Jaime's perspective here, because I mean, I guess it, it does feel like there's sort of a lot of activity on that corner of the property. But that being said, what's being proposed seems to be um, okay. And it's as of right, right? So, yeah, you know, one thing that they didn't mention here, and um, it came up in the zoning review, there's a, a, a conservation easement on the back of all of these properties. So there is sort of a limitation as to where they can put accessory structures, and you know it's it's obviously their own, you know, prerogative to want to have some rather large accessory items. But the the pergola, because of the way the code is written, you know, the, the building inspector department, it's not an accessory structure, so it doesn't add into the thirty percent of the you know side yard. There's the you know significant conservation easement to the back of the property, which nothing can go in, not even you know ground coverage. And so the shed is sort of, you know, where it could possibly go. Uh, this this carport is sort of 
really the only available place where they could put something of this size. Um, you know, and, I, and I, this is not me saying anything in favor of this or against the application, but it, it is sort of limiting, um, you know, where they can put things on their property. It's not like they could have moved this carport farther to the back of the structure and kept the pergola, um, which, you know, again, is their own sort of personal taste um, dictating that. Right, and, and talking about personal taste, that was one of the things that we're not able to evaluate this based on. This is not a, um, that, was, that was explicitly listed out in the code style. Um, okay, I mean, if, if there aren't any other comments or thoughts from the board, um, I think we would, it would it's time to, to move forward. Um, so based on what we've heard, um, if, I think if everyone on the board agrees that, uh, or if, if enough of the board agrees that there's, um, you know, no, you know, that, you know, detrimented desirability based on this project. Um, if we could have a, a motion to that effect that we can move, allow them to move forward. Michael Aronson, motion to uh, approve this item. Bobby Valker, I second that motion. And a roll call. Mina Aaron. Aye. Michael Aronson. Aye. David Chow. Aye. Bobby Bowker. Aye. Isabel Nguyen. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Seth Roy. Aye. All right. The motion passes uh, seven to zero. And um, all right. Thank you very much. And uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. Now I've lost my agenda. Uh, well, I have it, and it's uh, the next. Yeah, uh, we're okay. skipping ahead, right? This is. We have um, Jonathan Martin here now. Great. Um, so I think that uh, can you put the thirty-one Croton Avenue. Yeah, let's do it. Can you thirty-one Croton? Can you give us the. Uh, the introduction uh, here, where yeah. we are with this. I know we've- Yes, so the out. application, um, this application is a form-based code application and requires uh, a special permit for the um, density bonus by the Board of Trustees, uh, as well as uh, you know, site plan, um, I think conditional use and parking waiver. So the, um, the, the status right now is that they have submitted to the Board of Trustees, the trustees have now asked the planning board to provide a referral, um, or I, I'm sorry, a recommendation on the um, on, on whether they should grant the special permit per the uh, the code. Uh, the way that the code is written is that uh, where where an applicant seeks the density bonus described in Table E3 uh, of the uh, form based code, uh, the village board of trustees may grant a density bonus by special permit provided the applicant. Uh, demonstrates compliance with the standards defined in 270-15.1 uh, and the required fee is paid to the community benefit, benefit fund. Um, so the, that community benefit fund is something that the, the board of trustees have not yet set and they're gonna need to deal with that uh, down the road. Um, uh, one of the components of this is that the density bonus shall not be granted if it would result in demolition of a building that is considered a contributing building to the downtown Austin Historic Architectural and Design District. This property is not in the downtown Austin Historic Architectural and Design District. It actually ends um, a few buildings down closer towards Highland Avenue. It is on that side of Croton Avenue. It extends onto that side of Croton Avenue, but it is the bank um, property that's on the corner uh, of Highland and, uh, and Croton Avenue. Um, so it's not affected by that. Uh, Jonathan Martin uh, prepared a memo talking about the form based code and how this project was compliant, noting that there were a couple of areas where um, there were small deviations from that compliance. Um, in particular, it was some of the setbacks associated with the property. So uh, we have Jonathan Martin here today to talk a little bit about that. Um, and hopefully, um, yeah, through your questions today, uh, you can provide a recommendation. Um, 
to the board as to whether or not um, the, the, the application is in compliance with standards of 270-15.1. So Jonathan, you want to take over? Yeah, hi everybody. Thanks uh, for inviting me in. Um, I, maybe uh, I will just pick up a little bit on uh, what Jaime said and go back to my memo. I think you've all seen this, but um, I, I will begin by saying that um, when I did the analysis for uh, 31 Croton Avenue, I, I was very, you know, sort of comforted in, in a way because uh, the uh, existing building and the proposed addition, so forth, really does comply to pretty much everything uh, in the form based code. And the reason why I was um, somewhat comforted is because uh, the process actually worked. We built this code to reinforce the existing conditions and the built conditions uh, in the downtown along Croton Avenue with these two overlay districts. And so when you have an applicant come in, uh, modifying an existing building with this addition and so forth, um, it, it, it shouldn't be a surprise, but it is a comfort that it really does comply with all the parameters in the form-based code. I did find two small areas um, of note, but I noted them as de minimis and recommended that they could be uh, talked about with the planning board and uh, probably uh, either um, uh, uh, remedied or seen within a certain uh, margin of acceptability. And the first one is uh, the width of the sidewalk. Um, there's a requirement along this uh, street frontage um, a neighborhood commercial street frontage of a 10 foot sidewalk. Uh, the existing sidewalk that is there is uh, eight feet. Um, I did make a note that uh, the front of the building, the way the applicant has shown the extension of hardscape into and onto their property, it actually does extend the usable width of the sidewalk in front of their property. So I, I sort of marked that as um, a, a note for the planning board and the architectural review board to, 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 to note. Um, the second uh, element which um, uh, relates to specifically the additional story that is being requested uh, had to do with a very small portion, I think, of the east side uh, that uh, allows for vertical circulation um, uh, within the building, and that encroaches into slightly into that required eight foot, eight foot front setback at um, after four stories or 48 feet, then the building along the front is uh, sets back, which this building does, except for this little uh, sort of pitched area. And we could also look at that, um, and maybe this is a determination for the uh, for the the building department. Or my determination was that it is a bulkhead, and so therefore would you know be exempted from that. But those are two things that I, I raised. And as I mentioned, I found them, uh, at least in my memo, to be de minimis. And other than that, this uh, does conform uh, fully to the, uh, the regulations in the form-based code. Thanks, Jonathan. I, I think one of the, I just I remember having this conversation at our last meeting. And one of the things I just wanted to be clear on was, was the sidewalk was the sidewalk difference so is that just an existing it's an existing eight foot that and you're supposed to have a 10 foot and so that's not a change or anything that they're making or it was yeah that exactly that that is an existing sidewalk uh this is an existing you know they this is an existing building so it's not a new construction in a way and the um buildings that sort of run east and west west of this uh particular site uh, they are saddled with uh, their existing sidewalk. The requirement for, an, for a 10 foot sidewalk, really I think within the code, the intention was, um, you know, if a new building was to be built, um, that uh, then that would be certainly a, a, a requirement because everything would be new. Uh, pretty much the, uh, with, with the exception of some aesthetic and design modifications slightly, I, I, I would say there are improvements to the front um, facade at the, at the street level to this building. Um, with the exception of those, uh, this is pretty much sort of the existing condition. 
Uh, but as I mentioned, you know, if you take a look at the plans there, the, as they encroach or they move further back onto their site, they're re-landscaping portions of that and adding in some additional hardscape. So if you were actually to measure from the curb back to where the hardscape ends, you would get eight foot for your ten, uh, eight foot for your sidewalk, and then you would get some additional hardscape which they are putting in. And so therefore, you know, my discussion on point that I, I made is the effective area does meet the code. It's just not. Um, sort of the formal sidewalk that would be within the uh, village's jurisdiction. Got it. Um, okay, so I want to try to see if we can kind of get this back on track to, to focus on getting a letter that the um, trustees need. Uh, so essentially, the, the, the goal, I think, is to have the planning board uh, provide a letter to the board of trustees that states that it is in compliance or uh, it is largely in compliance minus these uh, de minimis, um, at, you know, as stated by Jonathan, de minimis um, uh, items um, regarding the, 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 the appropriateness of the project. Essentially, the, the board needs to understand uh, or needs to have explained to them through the letter whether or not uh, the proposal is meeting the uh, you know, the criteria and the appropriateness for the district. Um, and so essentially there, there's a, a lot to the code, but I think Jonathan's uh, memo kind of gets into the heart of the code. Uh, you know, Jonathan identified a couple of items where there's some slight deviations. It's a really long code. I think there are other ways that it is um, appropriate. Maybe Jonathan, you can kind of highlight some of those ways, uh, something that might be useful uh, to provide as comments uh, and feedback to the, um, to the board of trustees that the, that the uh, planning yeah, board. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would uh, sort of just build off what Jaime said. I, I do think that, you know, on, on the whole, if I was to look at this, understanding how complex, um, uh, you know, and detailed this form-based code is, um, and as I began my discussion, uh, you know, I think this is really uh, a project that exemplifies the kind of approach that you would want and the conformity that you would want. There are always going to be small things, I think, that um, uh, you know are going to be sort of very close or just outside. And those kinds of things that, that are important, such as height or uh, side yards or, or rear yards and, and, and setbacks and frontages, um, I think those would raise concerns. Um, this uh, proposal, uh, you know, I think flies through all of those. And I, I think, you know, in the letter to the um, Board of Trustees, I, I, I would recommend based on my review that um, this building is, uh, you know, in conformance. Um, and, uh, you know, there are, uh, you know, you could mention a couple minor details if you, if you so choose, but I think the sidewalk uh, issue has resolved itself with, the way the front is, um, the front of the property is being landscaped and treated. I think that is actually a very creative and positive way to solve it because the only other way to do it would be to build a wider sidewalk uh, forward into the uh, parking spaces. Uh, and so in, in that sense, the building, uh, the applicant has provided this additional hardscape which meets that criteria. Um, uh, uh, on on their property. Uh, the uh, other one, I, I think uh, the building does meet the criteria uh, because uh, your own code uh, does exempt bulkheads from uh, 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 as being counted as protrusions. So I think using those two points to uh, respond to my, my comments and um, other than that, uh, I could not find anything else that um, uh, would raise any concerns. And I, I, I think this building meets all the criteria, uh, both in spirit and, and in the letter, uh, everywhere else in the code. And uh, maybe I'll just wrap up and, you know, I think maybe as I've said before, it, this is an exemplary project. I, I think they've, they've done a great job and um, it, it does fit into 
uh, exactly what I think the intentions were when we developed and, and wrote the code with, uh, with village staff and through the comprehensive planning process. Thanks, Jonathan. I, I would, I think, you know, just pointing out, just reminding myself as much as anything, while they're doing the addition, the additions in the back, so all of these street front conditions that we're discussing, these are all existing conditions that they're not, you know, they're not changing. They're not in change. Um, it, it, and, it, they're actually improving uh, in some level. Yeah. Um, so I think in terms of putting a letter together to the board, I think that needs to be really clear. Um, and then that bulk, it, it kind of, it, uh, I, mean, I don't know if we can look at that bulkhead structure. It's just, it's just containing stairs, right? So it effectively is a stair bulkhead. It is. It is. Um, if we just look at that, I think I can picture it, but it's helpful to, to see it. Um, so you can see it here. This is the proposed bulkhead. And it is a stairwell. Yeah, it's just a stairwell leading to the prop, leading to the actual uh, apartment, which is set back. Right. And it's an, it's an eight foot required, Jonathan, it's an eight, eight foot required setback there before that. And, and, and this falls. How, how far into it? Uh, I would have to, I, I, I can't, I'd have to look at the drawings again, I'm sorry, but it, it is set back. It, I just remember it not being quite yeah. set back the eight feet. Yeah, you said de minimis. I, 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 you know, yes. I mean, it'd be helpful to have that number as we're putting the letter together, but. Um, okay. And is this also just, does this fall into the category? I know with some of these minor changes that this is it's the planning board, um is able to make minor adjustments versus getting zoning variances are both of these in that same right right so the the way that this the form based code was written uh it allowed the um there was a criteria that it allowed the planning board to amend uh the requirements of the code in order to um make projects essentially to to, to meet the needs of the project in order to make it better um so it does allow it I, if you give me a second i'll pull up the code and and uh, I, I can I can cite it right here for you if you if you would like uh, Jaime. Um, it's section two seventy fifteen A C um, of the overlay zoning code allows the planning board to grant modifications from any of the code requirements to facilitate good design and accommodate specific site conditions. And I think uh, both of these issues fall right in that. Uh, certainly, certainly uh, as we're talking right now with the bulkhead. Again, I think that's important to to bring to the board of trustees' attention. So it's mm -hmm. it's so small. This is none, none of these rise to variances. These are all dealt with, kind of within the construct of the code itself and within the plan. Correct. I'm gonna have to talk to JB about sending us such giant. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta download this. Uh, Where's that one gigabit of internet now? I mean. Uh, it's you know it it it, it, it opens up fine as a PDF you know I should yeah, I was over here bragging I, you know it's, <laughs> we call it hubris <laughs> so. so while while you're digging that up I mean well you can't bring anybody in I don't know if we want to bring the applicant in if they have any. Um, yeah, I can. I can do that. Um, let me just. Uh, I, I'm sorry. It's okay. Multitasking. Bring in the applicant first. JV. Um, and Peter Turnoff. All right. I brought in JV. I brought in Peter Turnoff. And uh, now open this other item up. Okay. So JB and, and, and Peter, as, as you're coming in, I don't know, I mean, I, you know, obviously, you know, as, as you know, our kind of mission for this meeting is to kind of provide feedback to the board um, for this next step. I don't know, after hearing Jonathan, if you guys have any other uh, input or any, if there's any other, anything else that's changed since our last meeting that, that's important to bring to our attention in, in this process? Uh, no. No. No, I mean, when Jonathan said it was an exemplary project, I, I figure we, we just say to stay quiet. <laughs> Probably a good idea. And I thought I'd give you the opportunity in any case. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I do have it. Um, are you having any luck or no? I got it. Okay. 
Um, so you can see here uh, the. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I think that the slide that you had was probably the. Yeah, no, that was. It, I accidentally went. Yeah, we need the side view here. Yeah, I was. I just. Uh, you know, I just. I bumped it and then there it is. Now let me zoom in. Okay, so the required setback is eight feet, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so there, it's actually not dimensioned how far how far it's set back, but we see the eight, that is is that an eight foot line there? It's, it's hard for me to see. It. Yeah, yeah, that that is the eight foot line there, and uh, I guess this is why I couldn't answer the question. I, I I probably should have scaled this, but it looks to me that you've probably got about a five and a half foot setback to the very low end of that uh, the you know the the bottom of the hypotenuse of the of the bulkhead. And then it slopes up at whatever degree that is, about 30 degrees going up until you hit the eight foot. So you've got that small triangle that encroaches into that eight foot area, if that but makes the, sense. But the roof of that, the roof of that setback is actually 14 feet past. Yes. Can you go back to that rendering? Because that actually was my only question that I had here. And maybe this is a JB question is because it looks like there's like a window on that. Um, face of that yeah we were trying to bring some light but that's you know the process isn't it sloped of... isn't it sloped away i mean that no, well, I... We're, what we're trying to do in that in that if we did the slope on the roof we we're going to keep it uh with the five foot if we do the straight wall we're going to bring it back to the eight feet so that's something we've been working with got it so here i want to i just kind of want to point out something real quick because it's um, so if this property is supposed to step back an additional eight feet from the front of the property line, but the build two line can be anywhere from, you know, from the back of this red line to here. So if, if the, if the building itself was actually farther forward, it, it, it might not even have that issue at all. Right. It, it's because of the, the way that the building's already set back a little bit. And then you add an additional, step back of eight feet, um, which sort of kind of reinforces the point that it's not really, it, it's, it's, it's much more compliant with the code um, when, you, when you remove that part of the equation. It's, and it's an existing building. So the, the code, the intent of the form-based code was to sort of um, reinforce the, the quality and character of the existing buildings in the area and sort of you know, new development um, that, that does a good job of, of working within that context. And in, in this instance, um, what the applicant is proposing to do, um, and I'll, I'll pull this up here, is they're gonna keep this building, but they're gonna fix the facade and, and return it to the original design, uh, which was brick face rather than the stucco. Yeah, I mean, and also that diagram that you're showing a minute ago and the build two line comment that you made is important because this, you know, the, the existing front of this building is kind of like bisects the build two line. It's kind of a, it's it's right in the sweet zone. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, and you know, the drawing that, that that was on the other item that JB did is, is actually a little inconsistent with this. You can see there's a slope. Well, I, think, I think that also that's part of one of the early drawings. Uh, yeah. So we've been trying to, um, Yeah, I, I think we, we boxed it out um, for aesthetic reasons because we just thought it would looked a little bit better that way. Um, honestly, I'm not married to it, but I, I, I thought that it boxed out with a window actually looked more consistent. Right. Yeah. It, in that, it, in that uh, image right there on the left bottom side, it is not, it's not sloped. And that's, uh, that's right. the window. Right. Got it. Yeah, and, and hi, uh, actually, uh, JB, you said that you would, if you were going to do the vertical face, that you would push that you were you have space to push that foot back, that set back to the full eight feet. Yes, if it's a vertical wall like that. Yes, and then it won't be. Uh, if I recall, um, the two item was the other item. Like we don't have the fifteen feet, 
uh, it was 13.8 to the existing wall from the uh, edge of the curve. But again, that's also an item that, uh, as per uh, like yeah, Jonathan said. I think I expressed that incorrectly. That's why we're, we're fortunate to have uh, Jonathan Martin here. He said that it was actually the width of the existing sidewalk was seven and a half feet, and what's required under the code is eight feet. That's why there was so much confusion. I had conveyed it incorrectly uh, when we spoke about it last. Yeah, it was helpful to have, have this presentation, Jonathan. It's, it's I think, clar clarified a lot of and then also, also, as you can tell here, in, in the rendering, we really took out all the, um, we show how we um, bring in, taking the stack out and bring in, uh, restoring the brick, restoring the log. And there is an, another rendering that I think we showed the trustees, where we also show in that we are maintaining the glass frontage as part of the lower level apartment and uh, uh, we're removing the, the edge and the glass. Uh, and here is a good picture that shows and that was just proposed from view. It shows well how the hardscape is on the sidewalk, even though it's only seven and a half feet, it does extend into the rest of the building. Got it. All right, any, any other Board questions on this, you know, board of trustees referral question. Um, I think we can see, we can uh, kind of go to the public for for a moment here if, if we have a motion to. I think we need to go to the public for this. I I, I asked Linda, but you're you're being asked to um, provide a recommendation to the uh, trustees. I, I don't believe that you need to go. Uh, and have a public hearing for that purpose. Yeah, you're you're not this isn't you're not looking to approve the site plan you're not even reviewing the site plan tonight you're focused only on making doing the recommendation letter to the board of trustees fair enough that's helpful thank you um staff do you feel like you have enough based on this to to get us a draft of the of a letter great okay um then i think we can move on from this application for tonight um so unless there's any other any closing comments i think we're good all right thanks all right so, okay i'll remove them there they're gonna hang out because uh, they're at the end of the again where, where are we up to <laughs> so uh, let me check. we are up to um the original letter a Right, so I think we are, we should be up to fourteen Water Street. I believe so. Yes. Yep. So, so this is we're now entering. Well, I guess that was part three of the of the agenda as well. So we're continuing business. Um, so this is. Yes. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to recuse myself from fourteen Water. Okay. Yep. Yes, please. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks. Um, all right. So we've got fourteen Water Street. This is Planning Board 06 2021 and VAR 05 2021. Um, and Jaime, if you will please give us the update on this project. Uh, so the, um, the applicant has formally submitted a new plan for the development of the property. Um, for a little context here, the initial plan included uh, three two bedroom units and 2,700 square feet of commercial uh, space uh, in a three story building. The new proposal has a five uh, has now five two-bedroom two units, uh, along with uh, 2,400 square feet of commercial, uh, and it's in a four-story building. Um, try not to get too caught up on the four-story versus levels versus, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that at a certain point. Um, the, the new proposal uh, overall has changed the dimensions of the building, enlarging the bottom level commercial space significantly. Uh, but decreasing the overall commercial space by 300 square feet. Uh, the significant changes to this project put into question the validity of the previous uh, seeker determination and the conditional use permit, as both were premised off of different projects. And at a minimum, uh, these, uh, these need to be updated. The, the, um, the seeker uh, and, and the seeker needs to be amended, uh, most likely in the conditional use permit would need to be amended. Um, uh, along with that, we're going to need the applicant to provide us with an updated EAF. Um, and the, uh, the parking waivers were also premised on the previous dimensions. Uh, a lot of work was done by the applicant looking into the 
uh, the setback and the grade plane and a lot of other components. Um, and, and none of this has really been fully reviewed by staff. Uh, the, the revision deadline for this was on 4-7. Uh, unfortunately, legible materials were not even submitted to us until 4-14. Um, they, I don't believe that the, the final legible plans have even posted to the web uh, as of this point, but um, either way, all, all of those were past the revision deadline and, and considering the significant changes, um, that wouldn't have been enough time for us to even really get to that at all. So um, with that in mind, um, the applicant is here and uh, I think they wanna present uh, on their proposal. Yeah, let's bring them in and, and you know, first step is to get Kind of a, a presentation of of where this project is, how this project has changed, and what the what the what the current project is. Um, understanding that staff still has to finalize the vetting, and you know the revision deadline comment I mean, is is important. Um, so you know we can we can look at it. We can offer some preliminary feedback, but I don't think we can go much further than that. Um, you know, to, I just and I'm sorry. I just want to follow up a little on some of the things Jaime said. Um, the reason you need an updated EIF is because you've already made a negative declaration and they are now proposing some pretty um, substantive changes to the plans. You need to relook at CECRA and, and sort of analyze if those changes will result in any other potential significant adverse impacts um, that you haven't already reviewed, any new impact, any different impacts. Um, and your conditional use permit also was for three residential units. They're now proposing five. So um, these things all need to be relooked at. Um, as Jaime said, there's still a lot of review to be done um, by staff on the plans. So it's it's almost a little premature to get too much into this tonight. Um, so I think you know if the applicant wants to do a presentation, that's fine. But I, I do think it's a little premature to, to get too far into this tonight. Because I, there is additional information that they need to provide and that needs to be reviewed. Got it. All right. Um, so who, who do we have here tonight? We have Ron Steinberzel and we have Joseph Brennan, which is one of the partners on the project. I see Eric Churchill I don't think he's here today. So okay. I guess Joseph is uh, standing in. Okay. Uh, apologies for the glare there. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to position myself around it. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, it, it's certainly unfortunate that there was some sort of uh, 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 pixelated area, uh, error, excuse me, on the text of the plans that were submitted timely, such that, uh, you know, understandably, there was a difficulty in reviewing them. Uh, well, they were not timely either way. The original submission was on the 11th. The revision deadline was the 7th. So they weren't timely either way. But but I do understand what you're saying. Yeah, and I, I would just you. note sorry, on that, that typically we were used to submitting on Mondays. And I think that it had changed to Thursday and we missed that. But going forward, we'll be, we'll be more aware of that. Uh, so while we recognize that there are changes to this project these these changes were were made in uh in, in the interest of responding to board concerns and, and listening as we have for the past year to concerns of the board uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh when we were previously before the zoning board and changed the project such that we weren't we weren't in need of uh any variances and creating a project as a right, uh, creating a project that we had uh, a reason to comply with the comprehensive plan, with the zoning, uh, and with what we believe to be uh, interests of the neighbors. We continued to morph that project over time, uh, listening to all of those same concerns. And in this most recent iteration, have made some significant uh, architectural and substantive changes to listen to those same concerns and at the same time uh, having pulled back on a lot of the issues that were reviewed during CICRA such that while 
there may be a interest of the board in reopening Secra, which is it, of course, within its power. Um, the the issues that we have, or I should say, the the substantive changes that have been made uh, impact environmental Secra related issues less than they did before. To the extent that the board needs to review that, that is understandable, but I'd just like to make clear that um, while we have made these changes, they, uh, they should not be looked at as an expansion of the project going forward, but rather to the contrary, a, uh, a contraction of, of the footprint Marginally, but a contraction nonetheless, and a uh, and a representation of the comments that have been received from both the board and the community. Um, with that, I think I'll turn it over to uh, to Mr. Brennan so that he can describe in greater detail some of these architectural and uh, and design changes. Great, thank you. Um, I, I'd like to share my screen if, if that's okay. Um, so I'd like to you know, just start by, by highlighting what we are proposing to change and the things that we, are, we aren't changing here. And as Ron said, um, a lot of these responses are to architectural comments that we've received and trying to make the building more contextual along the street but also into some accommodations that we need to make um, regarding private carting and repaving the full street, which were things we didn't expect to need to do at the beginning of this project that we, we are now trying to make accommodations for. So to really quickly run through this, um, we are actually reducing the overall commercial square footage, as uh, Jaime noted. Um, you know, we, we, we've heard that the commercial is a sticking point, you know, that the residential aspects is, is something that you know, um, some of the neighbors have expressed that they, they're opposed to the commercial aspects of it. We've set the building back from the street. Uh, we've reduced the height of the building at the street as well. Um, we've also reduced the height as it's directly adjacent to the neighboring properties. Uh, we believe the massing is more contextual. We believe the facade materials are more contextual. And as I mentioned, we're making the accommodations for the private carting and the street paving. Uh, we are not changing the number of required parking spaces. So even though we changed the, the program, the parking calcs actually end up less than eight, which we have a parking waiver for eight. Uh, we are not changing the actual area of the site disturbance. So the footprint of the basement is changing. But if you remember our first floor overhung in the back, um, so the back facade is not moving any closer to the property line. Um, we are not moving any closer on the north and south property lines. We're keeping I'm those. Sorry, can you just, I, I want to, I, I have to jump in here a little bit. I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. You're saying that you are not moving any closer to the rear of the property line at all? Um, you thought that no, you were shifting the property back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We shifted the building back. I misspoke. We kept the same footprint, but we shifted the building back. I'm sorry. Um, you're, you're, you're correct. We, we, we offset from the front and moved the whole thing back. Um, uh, we are not changing the loose use classification and we are not changing the conformance of the designation of basement. We're still compliant with that based on the, the grade plane. Um, so to kind of walk through some of the, the thing, this is, this is where we were before. And as I, as I noted, we had the commercial and then it stepped up and we didn't have any basement back here. Um, and then with the three residential units above. So you know, we, we, we wanted to, you know, again, responding to comments about contextuality and architecture, we really wanted to examine the neighborhood again and try to make this a lot more um, contextual with the street facing and the porches and the roof lines and things like that. So, so we looked at the roof lines. There are a lot of different roof lines in the neighborhood. They predominantly slope uh, away from the street. So it's a low slope roof sloping east to, to west predominantly. We've, we've incorporated this architectural aesthetic into our massing. Um, there are a lot of porches on the street. We have worked to incorporate open porches for um, both the commercial and the residential spaces and, and create some balconies for the residential. 
to create more of a community feel on the street. And we've also set back uh, off the property line, which the commercial properties that are at either end of the block are not set back off the property line, but the residential ones are. Um, and we've, we've created a setback off the front. So here's, here's our proposed updated massing and some of those roof lines that we talked about. Um, the roof lines that are parallel to the street are mirroring the surrounding context. We have that setback. Um, it's three foot from the property line now on the front. And we actually have a recess for this commercial entry to kind of further reinforce that setback. Um, as I've mentioned, there are no changes in the parking requirement. Um, our ground floor now extends all the way to the back. So like, uh, like we, know, we mentioned, we shifted the building back, but we didn't change the footprint of the overall thing. We just made our basement larger. Um, and we also removed all the commercial from anything that was above the basement. So this unit in the back is now residential. And we've added uh, a, an additional unit on the back here. Um, we've also tried to make the materiality more contextual. Uh, we're proposing, um, you know, it's, it's a striking a balance between the future tenants with, um, you know, with a, with a more modern design, but also contextual and, and looking at the verticality and the materiality of the existing neighborhood. Um, so we're proposing a cement board siding on the north and south facades, uh, you know, similar to some of the hardy plank that, and, and cement that we, we heard mentioned earlier uh, in this meeting. And we have a lot of openings and windows on the north and south facade. That's one of the reasons we kept it offset so we could have a, a good amount of windows on those facades. Um, we're also looking at sort of a, a vertical cement board that mimics wood on the front facade as well, uh, much more durable um, and, 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 uh, and less maintenance required. Um, horizontal cable rails for the balconies in the front, metal roofing with skylights. Um, and here's the massing in context. Um, you know, I think one thing to note is you know, it is smaller at the front, which I'll show you some dimensions of that as before. It's also smaller than the neighbors, um, not immediately, but up the street. So our proposal is actually smaller than some of these um, mixed use buildings up the street at the, at the, um, at the street, uh, I'm sorry, at the, at the front facade. And on the left here was our section of our previous proposal with the commercial garage on the ground floor and the commercial garage studios in the back. We've eliminated those. Um, you'll also see that our original proposal was 31 feet, two inches above the grade plane at the street, and it was 37 foot, two inches total. We've reduced it to um, 31 feet at the street. The overall height in the back is higher, but we've taken it and cut it down tremendously at the street. And as you can see from that perspective, you don't even really see that back portion of it from the street. We've also taken the commercial space and extended it all the way to the back and then added the residential unit and changed this to a residential unit. Um, so the offset from the north-south property line remains. The entry setback increases by three feet. The west face setback increases to five feet and the area of imperv impervious coverage does not change. Um, and here's just a couple real quick metrics. The total area of commercial square foot has been reduced by 300. We do still have the same amount of um, commercial offices, although the offices are smaller in total. Um, so the zoning of applicable GSF of commercial that counts towards parking was at 1,052 earlier. It is now zero since it is all part of the basement. And the total parking requirement, uh, previously we had three two bedroom units, which totaled out to 4.5. 152, I'm sorry, 1,052 square feet of commercial, which totaled out to 2.6 for a total of 7.1. Now we have the five two bedroom units that require 7.5 total. The commercial is zero since it's all in the basement now for a total of 7.5. So we're still below the eight spots that were allocated for in the waiver. Um, and, and that's it, thank you. Thanks, Joe. I, I'd also like to add, if I may, um, that if, if one takes a look at the, the layout of those commercial spaces that are still up there on the screen, you'll see that they are, they are not 
large retail spaces, they're, they're, they're not conducive to the conduct of business that is going to involve foot traffic. They are responding to the COVID era uh, economy that we're in, where, which is a work from home, or, or certainly significantly more so than it was just a few years ago, work from home environment where people need a desk, where people need a little space to do their jobs, uh, not distracted near home and not distracted by the dog and all of the other things that happen in our homes uh, that we're all well-versed with in recent years. All right. The, the, um, the conversion to add, more re to add more residential was to respond to some some of these concerns, though we believe they are they are not well founded, they are concerns and in interests of being neighborly and 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 uh, and and staying uh, uh, you know with a good community spirit. The, these changes can continue to be made, and and we hope that what's being presented now is is not just palatable, but but of interest to the community. I'd like to open this up to board members for just any kind of reactions or kind of questions specifically. I mean, you know, we're trying to focus this conversation obviously in terms of understanding what the changes are, but then I think more as just as importantly, kind of weighing the changes against the, the you know, the determinations that we've already made on the prior project, the, you know, specifically secret and conditional use. So um, I don't know if, I, if there are any specific questions here right now from the board. Um, Seth, can you just confirm, I'm, I'm a little confused because we did have the work session on March 31st where we did see not maybe all of this, but most of this, and we did make some comments and several board members made comments about um, the facade and um, sort of breaking up the, the windows and the articulation and so forth. So, but today, what are we supposed to be focusing on? Because I'm assuming, I'm, I'm assuming this is not the final drawings. In terms try to, I'm gonna try to answer that uh, as best I can. So they haven't submitted an EAF. Uh, number one, we're gonna need that uh, they uh, could need a whole host of new approvals, which we don't know until we've had an opportunity um, internally as staff to meet and discuss the implications of the changes that they've made uh, on the existing approvals. Um, so we, you know, for today, there's nothing to approve. Um, I, I think that, you know, you can sort of listen to what they have to say. If you have questions uh, of clarification for this, um, obviously, you did give those comments at the work session, I believe it was, um, regarding uh, some of the changes that they wanted to make. Uh, they did not implement any of those changes, I think, except for maybe they added some windows. Um, those hand-drawn sketches um, are pretty much the same hand-drawn sketches that were there, you know, three weeks ago. They haven't changed. So I'm not sure if they intend on submitting any new ones. I mean, you can ask them that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess that is my question. Is this is this it in terms of the architectural um, appearance of the project? Or are you still working on uh, revising based on some of the comments that the board made at the work session? Yeah, I, I definitely think we're open to to address those comments and take those into consideration. I think we're a little bit under the gun to try to get to get something together just because um, there has been a uh, you know, uh, we, we, um, we, you know, we, we, we got the comments about the architectural and I'm sorry, I don't know the schedule as well as, as, um, as Eric does, but, but a few months ago, and then we just had the work session relatively recently. So we've been sort of trying to kind of um, figure out what the, what the best strategy here is going to be to number one, comply with the architectural comments that we've received and try to do something that is more contextual with the community but at the same time, still make, keep it a viable project. And so we're weighing a lot of things concurrently. And I think what we really wanted to do was, you know, um, 
get this before you guys for that work session, but then also get it out in, in, in a public venue to just, you know, to, to, to start the process and, and, um, and make people aware of what, what our proposal is. And, and if, I'm, if I may ask, if, if we are going to be asked for a new EAF or, or to otherwise comply with any part of CICRA, which has already been uh, uh, passed here, uh, and, and, and let me step back for a moment and say that this is not a new project. This is, these, are, these are revisions to an existing application and an existing project. Um, if, if we are going to be required to submit a new EAF and, and further comply with CICRA, uh, I, I would ask please that that be put to a vote so that we may have definitive direction as to what we are supposed to do. Now, I'm happy to address that. You, you have a negative declaration on a defined project. You have made substantive changes to it. Um, just the difference between three residential units and five residential units, the difference in the height on the back. There, there is, you know, substantive changes here so that the negative declaration that this board adopted was on a different project. This board as lead agency is obligated when a change is made to a project after CEQA is complete, the board has an obligation to analyze the impacts of those changes and to determine if those changes basically make a new secret determination as to whether those changes will result in any potential significant adverse environmental impacts and if the impacts are different than what they already reviewed. So that, that's the law, that's the way secret works. And, and, I, and I would add, you know, I just want to add to that, that we have a submitted part one EAF that clearly delineates this as, you know, what you're calling a two-story mixed-use building, has square footage, has unit counts. It's invalid based off of what we have here. So that their determination was based off of that EAF. It's, it's all, not all, I'm at, all I'm asking for purposes of the record, I understand everybody's position and I'm not gonna debate it, but all I'm asking for purposes of the record is as, as along with every action that this board takes, that it be taken by way of resolution or, or vote and, and not simply- and, and when they make a determination, it will be, but this is a procedural issue. Yeah. I, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm you know, Seth, I, I, I'm- I, yeah, I was going to. I was actually going to step in. Yeah, I, 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 I understand this. I, you know, at this point, I, I don't even have full and complete feedback from staff to even you know, to, to say anything other than that we're looking at this, we're reviewing it, and you know, the project has changed, and that you know there is going to have to be you know a reevaluation of Secra. That is not something we need to vote on. You know, tonight we can't. We need more information you know, from, from the staff who's reviewing it. And then once we have that information, then we'll move forward with any amendments, but that is not, that's not a, uh, a that's not a, a movement or a, a resolution passed by this board. I'm just trying to, un I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm trying to, for purposes of our future efforts here, which of course there are many, um, if we are saying that secret as i understand it we have to submit a new eaf or, so or an impact no... of, of uh, something that gives the board something to analyze the impact of the changes ideally it would be like an eaf with a comparative analysis but they they need to do that analysis Yeah. Again, you don't, I, so, I suppose my question. I suppose my question is, for, how do we know we have to do the analysis if the board does not yet have the information it needs to review the project? So you, you have you've made changes to the project. It's a different project than the project that the board gave a negative declaration on. Yeah, I. You know, I, I think that that's. That's the bottom line fact. The, you know, we we know that the project has changed in these innumerable ways that that have been described, you know, by you know by Ron, by your team, and and you know by our you know advisors here as well. So, 
That's a fact. So, but let's, has let, it been let's... changed in a way that could in any way increase the already determined non-existent environmental impact? Yes. I think that's, that's what. Yeah. That's and, what and they need to determine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Um, now, Linda, just procedurally, you know, right now we, we, we've had this conversation, we, we've opened a public hearing on this project, obviously in the past, we, we don't have anything, I haven't really had any real review because we're, we're kind of waiting on additional information, but as the public hearing was previously opened, is that something that we should, should be reopening at this, at this point with this information? Procedurally. So procedurally, you know, if, if you wanted to take public comment to hear public comment on the revised plan, but I, I would, you know, say there, there's going to be a lot more that's got to happen here. Um, you're going to get more information for the public to comment on. Um, you know, I, I think it's almost premature. Um, so I, I'm going to, you know, I do want to kind of jump in here. So there has been a lot of uh, commentary from the public, that including, you know, there, there was a letter from an attorney representing some of the neighbors. Um, a lot of information has been forwarded by, you know, various different individuals here. Um, I do understand Linda's position, and it's obviously up to you to determine what you want to do here. Um, the public has expressed um, to me as much as recently as, you know, a couple of hours ago that they did want to have the opportunity to speak today. I think that if you do, I, I would just keep their commentary very short. Yeah. And I would remind the public that, you know, some of the letters we've gotten, some of the things they've said, we have asked for. We've asked for the for secret to be relooked at, the conditional use to be relooked at. We've also pointed out that the plans have not been thoroughly reviewed by staff and that we are aware of the um, things that need to be looked at and potential issues. So, yes, you can take public comment. We, we ask that, you know, the public recognize that this board's not at the point of making any kind of decision and there is more work to be done. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's helpful. And, and the fact is with this limited information, we've, we've asked the applicant to come in and given them the opportunity to speak. So I think with that in mind, I, I think it does make sense to give the public an opportunity to, to briefly respond um, if anybody's here to speak. Um, I think you know, in that light, having a, a I think I earlier put a two minute cap on some spe on, on speakers just to get your initial feedback out there. And that can, you know, so we can listen to that as we go into this next step. But, but with, with all of that, um, it, with, with, with keeping in mind that we are, we are just at the start of this, you know, of, of looking at this, these revisions at this point. Um, so if the board agrees, is there a, a motion to uh, reopen the uh, public hearing? Eric Talbot, I make the motion to reopen the public hearing. Michael Aronson second the motion. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes. We're now in a public hearing. Um, so if you're if you're here to speak, um, regular rules, just please state your name um, in your place of residence for the record. Um, I am going to put a two minute timer. I'm going to um, got a stopwatch here, so I, I will be interrupting you if you go over. Um, so to try to, to be concise um, as, as much as you can, um, keeping in mind that this will not be your last opportunity to speak if you have more to say. I just want to be clear on that point. We have uh, Jim B. Uh, I believe it's uh, James Bennett. Um, and uh, uh, if you, he's, off, he's off mute now, so actually you can speak now. Just gonna... Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Okay, and I just want to you know, make a comment. I, I I saw what you guys have done, and I guess you guys will know what our response has been to all the stuff that's going on here. I, you know, I would like to ask you guys about the mask of this building, and nothing in this area, you know, carries that much mass in it. And would you guys consider putting this much mass in any other area in Austin at all? Just a quick question. And also, uh, uh, this is Clarence Mosley, 16. I'm here with Mr. Bennett also. And, it, you know, I just want to comment that 
you know, this, this even this new rendering, I know it's it's just, you said you got a lot that you got to look at and we appreciate you, you know, looking at that. But this, you know, it seems like for, to me, the, you know, even the, um, the, the waiver of this considered basement thing, uh, and they don't have to provide any parking. It seems like the more that it, they're given, the more they try to take because now you've increased it, you know, from from six units down to, to 13, 12, 13 on the bottom. And then you add it, uh, you know, two more apartments. But, this, you know, we're talking mostly about the mass of it. They're just going to concentrate on how it looks. That was that's important to us, too. But the mass of this and it's it definitely makes a, a huge impact on the smallest block one way street on the area, because no matter whether you got a waiver or not, if you got business or something down there, you're going to need parking for it. And more you got more now you have more units in the so called basement. And now you have two more you know, two or two more uh, residential units. So it's it's got to make a huge impact on just where people have to park at. And, you know, that's, that's, that's basically what I want to say. I want to keep it short, like you said. Thank you. I appreciate it, both, both of you. Um, okay, um, so those comments are noted. And, and um, we had, I think we have one other hand up right now. Um, so I'm going to reset my timer. And that's right. We can bring in Mark Fry. Great. Um, good evening. Let me uh, start off by saying how happy I am to see a familiar face, Linda Whitehead, uh, sitting with you. Uh, she is an extraordinarily has a tremendous expertise and experience. Uh, teaches at the uh, uh, many places, but does wonderful seminars for the Westchester Municipal Planning Foundation uh, that I have found very helpful and frequently quotes. I'll race through this. Um, First of all, it's important to note that the total square footage has gone from 6,600 square feet to 8,200, a substantial increase in the square footage. The cubic volume is now five times uh, the, the cubic volume of any of the houses, the average house on the street, including the funeral home and some of the larger buildings. Uh, that cubic volume that is excessively dissimilar, of course, in the, in the BAR law, which was quoted earlier tonight, the cubic volume is one thing that you can find excessively dissimilar and the effect on the property values. The roof is much higher in the rear. They now have essentially three roof planes, a shed roof, a flat roof, and a gable roof. The three stories have been increased to four stories. The three apartments have been increased to five apartments. The basement uh, excavation as shown in the cross section, we'll go back 30 feet. I did the math. All of that is rock as shown in the cross section. It'll be 220 cubic yards additional rock that will need to be removed uh, within 15 feet of foundations that were built in 1858. Uh, the balconies are uh, not porches. They're 18 inches deep. They don't give a porch feel. There are porches in line in there that are clearly six to eight feet deep. 18-inch uh, balconies don't give you a porch feel. There's a substantive problem with the rear buffer, not a setback. The setback is fine, but right. there is a residential we're rear at, buffer required. We're at two minutes. So oh, okay, yeah, I'm almost well. there. The gross square you footage. We will have opportunity. We, we will be back here again on this, as uh, I can assure you, and you will have plenty of opportunities um, to thank, go through this. Thank you. I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, do, we, do we have anybody else, any other hands raised um, in the public right now? I don't see any. Okay. Um, very good. So we have a motion then to adjourn the public hearing. Uh, we have, no. Do we have a hand or no? We had Miguel Hernandez for about a second, but then he didn't know what oh. So I guess not. Speak now or? Okay, there, there will be other chances. Um, okay, so uh, can we have a, a motion to adjourn the, the hearing for now? Michael Myronson, motion to adjourn the public hearing. Second that motion. Any objections? No objections, the motion passes, the hearing is adjourned. Um, okay, so I, I think at this point, um, 
kind of we we know where we are. Uh, we know what we're looking for in terms of you know updated EAF and and trying to in, you know kind of reevaluate where where we stand regarding Secra, and we'll also be looking at conditional use in a similar light. Um, so thank you guys very much. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, so moving forward, uh, we are now up to, is this gonna, all right, so we have left on the agenda 136 Croton and we have, hold on, I, sorry, because I know we moved some stuff out, you know, around a little bit. Uh, I'll tell you right now, we are Yeah, on... it's the last two, right, that it's. Um, no, no, we're on to four state street now. Okay. Um, so the, just let me get back into the order of where we are. So after 14 water, uh, we have four state streets and, and then, then we have, um, uh, completed 31 Croton Avenue. So yeah. So four state street, then 136, 140 Croton Avenue. And after that, it's 30 water street. So. Okay, great. So for four state street, um, you want to give us the, uh, three the <laughs> Uh, yeah, so quick rundown on uh, for State Street. The applicant is looking for a site plan DAR and conditional use approval to open a bar in a renovated house with a new outdoor deck. Uh, the applicant received a variance for parking and building coverage uh, at the recent ZBA meeting. Uh, we have some notes here from Keller Sessions. Um, so I'm just going to read them out, um, uh, but Joe's here. You can uh, elaborate on them. Uh, as needed. So in consideration of the application, the planning board should opine as to whether the applicant will be required to provide any additional information or studies to evaluate the potential environmental impact or preservation of environmental elements noted in section 270-23F4. I, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of Joe, so maybe you can clarify this, but I think that comment is just specific to how the code is written, that that's something that you are supposed to do. Um, it's not necessarily stating that you need more um, studies, only that you're supposed to opine on whether or not you want more studies. It's part of the requirement of the planned waterfront district. Um, is that correct, Joe? You're on mute. Yeah, that's that's correct. I mean, I'm just trying to get my memo in front of me, but that's that's the intent of the comment. That's, well, that's language pulled directly from your memo, but yeah. Yep. Okay, so also as per section uh, 270-26B2, the planning board can consider whether the proposed plan adequately buffers and screens adjacent properties from noise and odor. Um, so the applicant can speak on that when they come here. Uh, the plan appears to propose fireplaces for the first floor bar uh, and the second floor lounge area. The proposed chimney extends beyond the property line. It appears to be situated on remnants of the old foundation wall. Uh, it appears an easement from the adjacent property owner, Austin Urban Renewal Agency, will be required or the fireplace uh, would have to be removed. Uh, I spoke with the applicant today about that. Uh, they said that they are not doing any work to the fireplace. They may reline the fireplace, um, but they are not proposing to actually build a fireplace. Uh, rather, it's an existing chimney, um, and they plan on just using the chimney that exists. So um, I would need some clarification from Joe, as to whether an easement uh, is needed in that instance or not, I'm not really 100% sure. So, but maybe um, Joe and Linda can provide some feedback on that particular issue. Yeah, just looking at the plan, I think the if the survey is correct, it looked like the existing chimney extends off site. So, um, I would imagine they would need an easement, or some form of agreement to keep that there. Uh, I don't know if you have any different thought, Linda. If it's existing, um, it's it's really not necessarily an issue for the village. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's an existing point. encroachment. It is. Yeah, it's an existing encroachment. The building itself is like a hundred years old, so it's a pretty. And and they're not changing it. Yeah. And if you confirm today that they're not making any modifications to yeah, it, they're not, they're not, they're not making increasing it. Process. There's, they're not going to be repointing the chimney. They're not doing any work to the chimney. They're just leaving it as is. Um, uh, they said that they would need access to the side of the property in order to replace the siding. Um, so they're going to have to work with the village to get, um, you know, access to do the siding of the property. Um, at, and, you know, the comment from the applicant was that if the village didn't 
give me access to do the siding, then I would just leave the siding as is, um, which would be obviously ugly, but is certainly at the discretion of the village. Uh, I think it's unlikely that the village would decline access to reside the side of its property. Um, the uh, next comment was that the plan should identify all trees with a BBH of four inches or greater to be removed uh, or protected. Uh, so probably a topic we can uh, discuss with the applicant when going through the site plan today. Um, also, the construction access to the site is extremely limited. Uh, the applicant should provide a construction staging plan illustrating material stockpile areas and equipment staging locations. Um, so there's some more details that get into the specifics of that. I think that when the applicant comes in, they can kind of talk a little bit about that. And then I think that we should probably make a determination here as to whether or not that construction staging um, is something that can be submitted as a condition of the building permit um, or whether it's something that needs to be determined uh, prior to the decision on the site plan. Um, and then it also, you know, another a comment from um, Keller's memo is that the plan should illustrate in detail how the slopes of the, at the rear of the site will be stabilized both temporarily and after construction to prevent uh, the construction of the proposed decks. And I think the applicant has um, intentions on answering that question as well, so. All right, let's, let's bring them in. We have JB Hernandez and we have Peter Chen. I think it would be helpful to put these drawings up. It's been a while since we've actually looked at this project because mm -hmm. I know it's been with zoning for a little. Yeah, JB, do you want to? Um... Yeah, I can share a screen if. Uh... Um, well, as Jaime said, we went in front of the uh, Sony Board of Appeals and we got a, a variance for the parking. We also got a variance for uh, the lot coverage. Um, this is the, um, this property is located at uh, State Street and Main Street. Uh, this is uh, a picture of the house, the existing building that we are remodeling. Uh, these are some of the neighborhood pictures, and also uh, this is kind of another aerial view of the uh, area. And this is behind the post office uh, for middle location. Um, this is the property that we're uh, talking about. This is the Austin over renewal, a small property. Our property itself is very small. It's about 2,578 square feet. Um, we did provide a uh, survey of the trees, not only the few trees that are on our property, also uh, the trees adjacent to us. Uh, there are, um, you know, few trees that are coming down at the end where are in um, where we're building the deck. Um, this is very small uh, work on the foundation being done. And, uh, most of the work is going to be in the interior. Uh, we renovate in the space. Uh, there is one, uh, some of the smallest steps and uh, concrete uh, block, the area that's being removed. Um, then we were proposing, I'm sorry, let me show you that um, as we enter, we will have an um, seating area that is a double space bar area. And then we have the stairs going up to the uh, second level. And we have a small kitchen and uh, a bathroom area that is in the back. And there's also an, ac you know, an accessory kitchen at the lower level. Uh, the second level is gonna be uh, open as a, you know, it has a, it's a mezzanine overlooking the bar area and also open to a uh, second story upper deck. Uh, again, we are keeping, we are replacing um, the siding, replacing the windows, but we are keeping very much the same uh, uh, design. And uh, also, uh, these are the two decks that are extending over, uh, gaining gain view to uh, the Hudson River uh, 
you said. Um, again, very much uh, this is the, the uh, view from the rear. Uh, we use an uh, Pella contemporary color white windows to replacement. Trim is going to be white. We use an uh, Heidi Plank Deep Ocean is the color. Uh, the railing is going to be white. Uh, the door is going to be white. And then we have a, a sign uh, 54 inches by 28 inches that will say the name of the, uh, in blue will say the name of the restaurant. Um, Gastropub, that would just be Hudson Perch. Um, and this is kind of some 3Ds that we have done. Uh, it showed the, uh, the upstairs, uh, the uh, mezzanine area. This will be our intention to have an uh, open upper level uh, deck area that has river views. And this will be um, the open area where the bar is with a double story at the entrance. And again, some views of the, uh, well, the views from the deck will be with the Hudson River. And this is an aerial view of the building, which is actually here. Um, and you can tell that it, we have the post office. And we have the uh, basically an extension of main street. Very much this was the, um, what we have shown the board the last time. And I know we had, uh, again, with the existing fireplace, um, the trees, the existing fireplace is right here. Uh, and this is kind of, this line is a stone uh, mess and retaining wall that is existing. It's an old foundation uh, and that's gonna remain untouched. Um, and again, here we're doing the same thing. We maintaining the, uh, the stone wall makes it is like an old foundation. And this is the area that is uh, adjacent and eventually um, uh, is the urban, urban renewal area. And I, oh, I'm sorry, I wanted to, again, the trees, um, we only taken, um, we loosen uh, three trees in the back. I mean, one, one thing we're, worth noting, there is a retaining wall at the rear. There, there, we don't have a sloping wall in the back. Yeah, uh, there is, I'm sorry, there's a retaining wall here and there's a retaining wall along, um, I believe it is 80 Main Street driveway. So this- the, area, Yeah, our site is level. I mean, there's some sloping on the, on the village owned land, but not on our site. Who owns the retaining wall? Um, I guess it's between us and 80 Main Street. I'm trying to see. I, I think it's on my property, if, if, I, if I see it correctly. I'm trying to see if the aerial view has a. What, is, what does your survey show, JB? The survey shows it's on the, it's on the line between us. Sorry. I was going to see if we can get a better view of. Uh, Has there been an assessment of the condition of that wall and as, as part of the, the site plan review? No. No, I mean. Uh, no, I mean, I, I think that, you know, the building department's gonna, if they go in and do their work with the, with the deck, that retaining wall primarily is over by the deck. So if they go in and put right. and stuff like that, they'll have to do an assessment at that time. So you see, this is the retaining wall, the, this retaining wall right here. Got it. And we not it's not impacting our work because uh, we're doing a deck, and that's going to be up here. So uh, we should take in these uh, trees here and have to build a deck. That's very much the uh, the extent of the work. Uh, What's the diameter and species of those trees? Uh, let me see. That. We have a full arborist report, don't we? Yeah, it's it's part of the drawings. Just trying to get back to it. Yeah, I saw it a minute ago. Yeah, like, it was there. It was, second was page or something. Going to try to ask you, and then I got sidetracked. So there's one that's DBH is uh, 22, 8, and 6 inches. Okay. All right, those are the those are the four for removal. 
Yeah. I think two of those are, the six inch doesn't matter, I don't believe. Uh, the eight and the 22 inches, I think, are ones that need tree permits. So you have to take a vote on that tree permit. Okay, that'd so, be part, part of the site plan, right? That's what we've been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And has this has this project been referred to or been to the um, environmental board? No, it has not. It's a type two application, oh. so it doesn't require referral to mm -hmm. the EAC. Got it. I don't know. Board questions. JB, can you um? Stop sharing, you mind? Stop sharing? Yeah, if you could, yeah, just because uh, that way everybody can see each other. <clears throat> yeah. Any thoughts or reactions? I know, I mean, you know, this is a conditional use. This is a, you know, restaurant is, is not as of right. So that's that's one thing that we'll be looking at. Um, I think there's some stuff there in the site plan that we, you know, there, there may be something with, with the, the decks and just kind of making sure that we're comfortable with all of that. Um, you know, I'd say my initial reactions, and I think we, a lot of, you know, I certainly said this before. I think it's a, it's a it looks like a good project. Um, you know, I, I, I like the effort of restoring this old building and, and putting something there. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be helpful to have some more, you know, some some specific feedback here, folks. Have. Well, it, in as much as nobody's raised their hand just yet. Um, Normally, we require that applicants provide a, a annotated response letter to the Keller Sessions memo. That's part of that's one of the comments at the end of the memo. We didn't get that. Uh, I think it'd be helpful if we could just go through those questions and have the applicant respond to them. So, if you want, I can kind of go back through that list. Yeah, let's get responses, right. and then maybe um, the, the board can chime in at that point. Um, all right. So, the first question, and you can, if you want, um, you know, JB and Peter, feel free to. Pull up the color sessions memo. Uh, one of them, one of the questions was uh, whether or not the, uh, the proposed plan adequately buffers and screens adjacent properties from noise and odor. Obviously, this is a you know this is a bar. Uh, do you want to speak a little bit about you know potential impacts from noise and odor, smoking, you know, on the deck and things like that? Well, I believe that both. I mean, uh, the surrounding properties. Uh, there is a uh, residential unit, but there is a, uh, a driveway and uh, there is some parking in between and the other area uh, towards the south, towards the river, uh, we have 80 Main Street, which is farther out. And then across the street, we have Main Street, uh, the Main Street business and the post office and adjacent is the, uh, again, the urban renewal uh, a small piece of property so it is uh kind of on its island when it comes to uh noise and uh um, it's only also 2500 square feet of uh, piece of property so uh, there is not much um that we can do as to come to buffer or install trees yeah, the, the neighbor to our, to my left side there is i mean there's a substantial blacktop parking area um, which, depending on the day, has commercial trucks parked on it and cans of tar and paint and other construction debris. Um, we will have fencing along there. Frankly, my interest in the fencing is more that I don't have to look at his construction area than um, I think that something offensive is going to be coming out of this establishment. Um, and then everything else is a parking lot, except for the, the village owned land to the right. Um, can you, what are your, you know, what are your plans for smoking smokers, you know, people go to bars and they smoke cigarettes, um, as well as where's the food exhaust? I didn't see any thing on the plans uh, highlighting where the exhaust is. I'm assuming it's coming out of the ceiling, out of the roof, but I actually didn't see it on the plans. So. Yeah, it would exhaust the roof. I mean, the, the kitchen is, as you can see, we've fairly limited. It, it's, you know, it, it's not going to be operating. Uh, sort of as a full restaurant. Um, in terms of smokers, I don't think, I mean, do people smoke in outdoor areas of, of 
restaurants. I mean, you don't, you don't have to allow smoking like, on your Yeah, deck. like I don't, I don't go to Free Westerly and find someone sitting next to me smoking a cigarette, I don't think. No. I didn't, I, didn't even, I didn't even imagine that was permitted, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it. I smoked a couple of cigarettes outside of the restaurants. But, uh, Sorry? I've smoked a few cigarettes in front of restaurants. It's usually in the South Bowl. Uh, it's neither here nor there. I just wanted to make sure the question was asked. So no, but I mean, just, just in terms of the outdoor dining area, I don't, I don't think people are permitted to sit at those things and smoke. Not, not like on your deck, not on your eating areas. Yeah. And if they were, I wouldn't want it. It's, it's not, you know. We keep going through this list. Uh, yep. The um, the next item is the chimney. Um, so uh, as mentioned before, the plan appears to propose fireplaces, first floor bar, and then second floor uh, lounge area. The proposed chimney extends beyond the property line, appears to be situated on the remnants of an old stone foundation wall. Um, so can you just talk about the work that you intend on doing with the chimney to get them uh, working and the limits of that work. Yeah, the chimneys would the chimneys would just be relined with a with a uh, stainless steel liner, and and a damper at the roof level. We wouldn't be rebuilding them. And though you know, in terms of, I think the legality of that, um, I think that's covered under under adverse possession. That thing's been sitting there for a hundred years. I, I you know whatever the survey shows, it's it's there. Um, we certainly can't enlarge it. But I, I I don't I don't think that 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 has to come down. Uh, okay, and Linda, you gave your opinion on that earlier, so I think it's kind of yeah. a point at this point. So all right, so the plan identifies trees uh, with a DBH of four inches or greater to be removed, protected. I think that the six inch tree is not necessarily covered. Joe Tremelli, I don't know, can you uh, help me out with this? Because I don't know if you need a permit for a six inch tree. We usually ask people to highlight anything at six inches and above but i thought the cutoff was like eight or nine inches yeah i just your your code defines a tree as a you know something having a deviate the deviate of four inches or greater yeah um yes um, i can confirm with joe well i'm trying to remember which ones require i can look it up real quick but i don't know i didn't know if you knew it offhand we can we can get that information and and you know that'll be worked into any, any resolution that we ultimately come to on this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, construction access uh, to the site is limited. You wanna talk a little bit about your intentions regarding uh, sort of staging, stockpiling of equipment and materials um, and, and, and sort of site access, how you're gonna deal with issues of site access, Peter? Yeah, well, we've got we've got about three feet down the side of it, but you know, more specifically, we're probably just going to walk right through the house. Um, in terms of staging and storage of materials, um, I wouldn't dream of leaving a bunch of windows and doors and wood out for someone to pull up in a truck and steal. So, um, you know, we buy it as we go. Um, you know, we pick stuff up locally, and you know. When the windows come in, you can bet those are going to be locked inside that house. Those are, you know, everything's more expensive than ever right now. So there's not going to be a bunch of stuff outside of that building. It'll it'll be in there. Vis-a-vis um, -vis equipment, um, you know, ANI General Construction is is in Austin. We're, we're not going to be keeping equipment on the site. We have no need to do that. Yeah, the comment was more, I was more concerned with the construction of the deck and how you intend to do that. You know, especially knowing, um, you know, access to the rear would be basically on the 80 Main Street property. So I don't know how you plan to excavate in four footings, construct the deck itself. You know, just, it'd be nice if the plan highlighted and indicated some, some staging areas, some access, how you intend to, to do that and what kind of area you would need beyond the limits of your site to accomplish that. I don't think there's, I don't think they're really substantial footings. I mean, once again, we're going to either walk down the side or walk through the house. Um, it's, you know, any, any more, I mean, this is for all intents and purposes, the renovation of an old house, you know, not, not much more than that. And the construction, I mean, the, the footings are going to be dug, you know, by hand. 
Well, then maybe it's just some notes on the plan to that effect. Yeah. That, you know, make it clear on the plan that you're sure, not sure. required to stage, you know, in the right of way or on your neighboring property or whatever it may be. Sure. Um, that, that's all it really, that's all I'm really getting at. Just want to make sure it's clear to everybody. We can, we can add a note, Joe, that deal that says that, you know, we won't be uh, using large equipment or anything that will require access to uh, the neighboring property. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, do you, Joe, is that something that you think can be handled as a, as a condition of approval um, to be added to the uh, resolution, or do you think this is something that requires them to update this prior to the site plan decision? No, I, if the board's fine with it, I'd be okay with the uh, condition in the resolution to deal with that. We'd want to see it prior to a building permit, but you could certainly condition it, condition the resolution on that, I would think. All right, so the, uh, the, the tree permit requires six inches, anything that's six inches or above. Um, and I'm just trying to pull up the, the details. It, can you pull up that um, drawing again, JB? Show me yeah. the details. So there are basically uh, 959, 958, 957 are the trees identified as uh, um, these are, oh, I'm sorry, I keep, uh, so this is 22, eight and six inches. And there's an eight inch tree that we have been removing uh, in the front in order to put the side. So total of uh, DBH of 38 inches that we'll be removing. 28 or? No, it'd be 22 and 8, that's 30. And then uh, if you count these eight, are you still counting the six inch or not? Yeah, the six inch counts. Yeah. I guess then it's total of 44. Okay. Are you replacing any trees? Are you planning on planting any trees? There is no. Um, there is no. Uh, place on the site. And then, you know, the to put any trees in the rear will be to, you know, again, uh, the idea is to have the view shed of the river. It won't take away from that. Can you just point to where the, just, so is there's nothing on the, you know, along, I guess, I guess that would be the north-south lot line on the or maybe maybe it's the east west side it's lot line on the south side of the lot yeah there um and that's where the parking lot is adjacent yes this yeah. is, an, uh, it, doorway. is there, any, there any room on that strip to maybe like do some plantings that would also provide some screening or are you too well, i need to be line? able to get down that side yeah um uh, that, that's that's the only way we have out really right I mean, in the past, we've been asking when we when we've issued tree permits to have you know in kind replacement. Um, you know, there's one pretty significant tree that's being taken out here, um, the 22 incher. So I mean, I'd be curious if you know I don't I don't know if there's a way to to, to put that somewhere else or if, um, even on the I don't know if the the village would want trees on that adjacent lot um, or if there are any other are any. I mean, that's certainly up to the village. I you know. I wouldn't recommend it because uh, honestly, I don't even love the trees that are on it because when you're sitting, let's say outside First Village Coffee, if we didn't have these trees here, you'd have a much better view of the river. That goes for Malike and Dokas. I mean, all that, when they have their outdoor spaces there, these trees are actually blocking them a bit. So to add to it, I'm not saying take them down, but to add to it, I, I, don't, I don't know that that's a problem change. What, what has been done in other um, properties, uh, a couple of other properties has been that the applicant has um, provided offsite. So essentially, you know, at vi some village, you know, property replacing trees or um, offsite. So essentially, you know, working with the village to identify alternate there, locations where you can plant trees. There was some Facebook chatter about some ash trees that were taken down in the park and stumps left 
on town property recently. Um, maybe we could replace trees there. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I, we just don't have the, the spot, the space on this property in particular. And, and norm, we don't normally have that. It, it, you know, the, the condition is that there will be a replacement at a location determined by the arborist or um, I think parks department for the agencies that we talk to. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if someone just wants to tell me where the trees should go. Yeah, what, what that... we from the board today is just a determination of the DBH to be replaced. Um, okay. And uh, so the, you know, the, the DBH replacement, I think in, um, in Birchbrook was like around 50% of the, um, the, the, the total DBH. So, I was, uh, was going to suggest that I, I believe from past experience that 50% in other municipalities is the DBH mitigation. I think that should be fine with us right here. That's with like, you know, two and a half, three inch tree so you know by 20 that's i don't know eight ten trees essentially i mean i could put them on other land that i own but i i feel like that proposal is a little bit silly <laughs> like if we should put them in a public park or something you, you don't need to decide that, yeah the question isn't where because that that that's a future decision by okay by the village um, <laughs> so just be part of the resolution is that you would you would pay to replace I, the I guess sure. it would be the question is, uh, will we be accepting a uh, 22 inch uh, DVH uh, mitigation, uh, a place to be determined by the village arborist? Yes, yeah, we would work with the village. It, it, it'd be a decision made between the arborist um, and potentially DPW commissioner uh, or the, um, the head of the, the parks department, depending on where the trees would be said to be located. Um, I think we could talk to you about potentially putting it on some some of your own other properties. Uh, I don't I don't think that that's outside of the realm of possibility. A tree, you know, serves as a carbon sink, right? So to, if it makes okay. sense on your own properties, it might not be such a bad idea. Um, the expectation uh, in the other instances was that you would actually uh, purchase and uh, put those trees in. So you, you you're going to want to hire a company to do that so or you know plant them yourself and make sure they stay watered but either way you'd have to do that and you'd also have to keep them um alive for a year uh, so kind of those standard conditions but okay. you know essentially it would be a condition of the building permit um that you would uh come up with this tree plan that got approved that's a condition of the permit and a condition of the co would be that the work gets completed um okay and in the past we have required um like a small surety bond, um, but I, you know, we can talk about that off offline to figure okay. out what it makes sense in this instance. All right, I, I think that answers the tree permit question. 20, 22 inches was the number, 50% of the 44, so. Yeah, 22 inches. Okay. Joe, does that answer your question? Does that clear that up, you think? Yeah, sure. Okay. What else do we have on that list? All right, let me go back to my email. Just some slope stabilization for the construction. You know, when the when the rear yard's cleared with the trees and the whatever minor grading may be needed to get the deck in. I'm, I'm sure you'll have some kind of treatment below the deck, Peter, so you don't get, you know, weeds and growth coming up through it. So whatever whatever that is, just add that detail to the plan. Right. Is, that, is that something that can be a condition of the approval as well, Joe? Yeah, I don't think it's a significant enough change to, to hold them up, certainly. You could just condition it. Are, are there any other of the of the comments that we've gone through already? I know we've asked explicitly on some of them, but not all. Are, are these all conditional type? Yes. Or? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So you, um, again, now you, what you have left is the, you have the site plan. I think you've kind of covered most of the questions. The site plan, the conditional use, uh, I think you've identified the various different conditions that you'd see to this plan, but unless there are any additional yeah. conditions, there was one condition actually, and it was in regards to the hours of operation. Um, the question came up very early on in this process about the hours of operation. They submitted uh, a letter to the effect um, regarding what the proposed hours of operations uh, would be for this. So I'm just gonna open it up real quick. Um, the proposed hours of operation are 
uh, Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12 a.m., Monday, 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday would be 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., Friday, it would be 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., and Saturday would be 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. Um, it says those hours are generally modeled after three westerly with two differences. They plan to open up early on Saturday and Sunday in the hopes of providing downtown Austin with a much needed weekend brunch destination. Uh, we'd also like to open up a little later. Uh, and on Monday night, we'd like to serve the substantial number of hospitality workers in the Austin community who work serving others on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Um, so that is their proposed hours. Uh, the property is not, I, I'm not sure, your next door neighbor has a construction yard. I don't know, is it a residential house with a construction yard or is it, Peter? I don't actually. No, it's it's one of those unofficial construction yards. Uh, it is a it is a house. I'm not saying he's operating his house yeah, as, as, as a business, but it's it's all it's completely black Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you want to pull up Google Street and and take a look at what that looks like, but I was actually there's there's one of the one of the photos that that JB put out there. I think was showed that pretty well. Yeah, that bird's eye view. Um, yeah. Just, uh, you want me to go back to that, or are you good? Uh, it's up to you. Um, oh, actually, I have the street view. I think it shows kind of the gap between the, the property pretty well. So I'm going to pull that up. Uh, the bird's eye view is pretty good too, but this is just a little bit of a different angle. Um, <coughs> sort of the gap. And you said there's going to be a fence here, right? So sort of separate yeah. moving forward. Um, Okay. I mean, it's it's not a driveway. It's a it's a parking lot with. <laughs> I'm gonna say a pickup truck and a dump truck. No, it's not a dump truck, is it? Yeah, landscaping truck. Might be a dump truck. I don't know. And uh, you you can see all the other equipment and stuff that's back there. Um, as I said, you know. I, think that I, I need a fence to block that view. They don't need a fence to block the view of me, but we will put a fence nonetheless. And that's how, how wide is that that passageway next? You know, you're going to the fence, then the lot line, and and then between the fence and your the building, how wide will that be? I think we have about three feet. JB, is that right? Yeah, it's so three feet, a little bit over three feet. It's like four feet the property line, I guess. Four feet minus whatever you're going to need for your fence, right? Yeah, once we have the fence, we'll be down to about a three foot passageway to get stuff down. The driveway needs to be at least 15 feet. So there's a good distance between um, the the two buildings. And as you can tell, it only has uh, two lower windows and two windows at the attic level. Um, so oh, it's very isolated, our building. And, and what kind of and how tall a fence are we looking at? material and, and size our house the fence house? the fence oh the fence it's, i think we've got six feet yes and in the front there needs to be in the front yard we can now have six feet so i think it goes down to four feet and material uh Wood. Material, i don't you're going to use the same material as the other uh, buildings peter I mean, yeah yeah, so it's going to be a white vinyl fence here. White vinyl? No, my other buildings don't have white vinyl fences. Well, it's not, it we, not be open you're, you're thinking of different clients. My, my fences are all wood. <laughs> Thank you. They're all wood. <laughs> <laughs> a white wood uh, picket. Okay, so I, I think that um, at this point, uh, it, is there are no further comments said that. I would recommend uh, opening it up for a public hearing, and then um, and then maybe start working on if you're ready, if you if the board is ready to start working on the decisions. Sure. Um, do we have a motion from the board to open this up to the public? Motion to open up for public hearing. Bobby, Bob, second that motion. Um, any any objections? 
objections, the motion passes. We're now in a public hearing. Is there anybody from the public here to speak to this project tonight? If, the, if you are, please raise your hand. A moment. Nobody. Not seeing anybody. Okay. Um, so this has been brought up before, but I, I, I would like to point out there were a number of letters of support that were sent in. Yep. Those were, and I think those were those were noted, and some of them may have even been read into the record on during a, a previous uh, hearing on this. Um, okay, so you know, as you know, before we kind of close the public hearing, you know, do we? I just want to be clear. So, Joe, we went through your list in in great detail. Um, so, of, of all of the different site plan comments that you had, um, all of them, you know, were were appropriate for you know for conditions on any on any resolution. Yes, in, in my opinion, that, that would be fine. Okay. Uh, and also in terms of, I mean, the conditional, we didn't, you know, we didn't speak too much detail about the conditional use um, other than I think the hours of operation, but um, you know, if there are any other kind of board thoughts or comments on that um, as, we're, as we think about moving. I just want to make a sorry, Seth. I just want to make a quick comment in regards to the hours of operation. Will the deck also will the deck also be open during all those hours of operations as well? Up to two. No, we we would shut the outdoor space at midnight. Okay. I think that's all the questions I have, really. So, do the, do those hours get worked into a site plan condition, or are those those conditions of the conditional use? Okay. So you're going to want to, if he's saying he's going to close it at 12, I think you're going to want to do that, uh, add that as a condition of the conditional use. There's no set criteria for the conditions. So you can kind of add them as, as you see fit. And if, if that is a condition that you can use, then you can say, you know, the, the deck is to close at 12. Um, and then if there are any other sort of um, general uh, operation codes um, that govern this, you know, outside of site plan, then that that's that's a different issue to be dealt with by code enforcement. I can't think of anything right now. I know we have like the loading um, code, um, Joe Tremelli. I don't know if you want to. Is there anything about like outdoor dining seating that's governing the code that you're familiar with? I thought I saw something, which was I think two two sixteen dash four which said sidewalk cafe or outdoor dining. And it had no operation after 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 11 p.m. Friday and Saturday. So I did have a question about that. Okay. Oh, I was not applied. aware of that. Yeah. I think that if that's the code, then that's, that's, then the, that's code. the code, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we will still be constrained by the trustees and the state liquor, liquor authority, so. Um, obviously we have to operate within their guidelines. And I think the trustees have to, I mean, I just sitting in on the last trustees meeting, um, they, they have to reapprove licenses, right? Periodically. Um, so there's, I know that there's an outdoor cafe park with licenses. I don't know that this counts in the same way as an outdoor cafe where sort of you're, you're, you're eating in the front of the, property but I, I think it probably is governed by the same hours and sort of the outdoor dining okay. is probably governed that way but they don't have to approve anything okay. so you don't need to get a special permit you know don't quote me on that check with the building department but, but i don't believe that you need a special you know annual approval the way that other people do to do outdoor dining okay. and sidewalk cafes um okay any bar bar questions you know we've, we've talked site plan conditional use um, uh, does does our BAR approval um, require or or approve the signage as is so that it, it guarantees that the signage couldn't be changed in the future in terms of the size and location? I'm just curious about that. There's no sign permit here, so the sign permit, if it's if it's in conformance with the code, goes to the building inspector. Uh, if they need a deviation from the sign code, then they'd have to go get a zoning variance. So this application does not include a sign permit application. That's not what's being presented here. Um, even though they're showing that they're going to have a sign, 
um, that's not a decision that you're making as a part of the BAR resolution. Okay, thanks for clarifying. Any, any other comments? Um, you think we're, if, if, you know, if, if we feel like we're ready, um, can we have a motion then to, to close the public hearing? Motion to. Go ahead. <laughs> Motion to close the public hearing. Michael Aronson, second. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes. The public hearing is closed. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like we, we've 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 heard enough on on this one, and there's a bunch of conditions that would go into any site plan approval. So I think we should probably start there. Um, so with all of the conditions already listed out, uh, do we have a motion to approve the site plan? Yeah, Bobby Bowker making a motion to approve site plan with stated conditions. I know, Aaron, second. And a roll call. Sorry. Uh, Nina Aaron? Aye. Michael Aronson? Aye. Isabel Nguyen? Aye. David Chow? Aye. Bobby Bowker? Aye. Eric Talbot? Aye. Seth Roy. Aye. All right. The motion carries seven to nothing. Um, next up would be the conditional use, again, with the conditions being the hours of operation, um, as well as the hours of operation for the exterior deck being governed by code regulations and no later than midnight. Um, do we have a motion on the conditional use? Michael Aronson motion to approve the conditional use permit with the conditions regarding usage uh, hours of operation and um, usage of the deck as stated. Bobby Bowker, I second that motion. And a roll call. Nina Aaron. Aye. Michael Aronson. Aye. Isabel Nguyen. Aye. David Chow. Aye. Bobby Bowker. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Seth Roy. Aye. And the motion carries seven to nothing. Um, and finally, on approval of the BAR review, we have a motion. Eric Talbot, I make the motion to uh, approve the BAR application for State Street. Isabel Wynn, I second that motion. And a roll call. Nina Aaron. Aye. Michael Aronson. Aye. Isabel Nguyen. Aye. David Chow. Aye. Bobby Bowker. Aye. Eric Talbot. Aye. Seth Roy. Aye. And the motion carries seven to nothing. All right. Um, the site plan included the tree removal permit, right? Correct. That's one of the conditions. Is that, does that actually, Jaime, does that work into the, to the, is, well, is that I mean, list? Yeah, I probably should have said that before, yeah. but I, I, we'll, we'll just assume that it's implied here that they're um, they're going to have to get the um, the, the tree um, permit. Uh, I'm sorry, the tree mitigation plan to us as a condition approved by us uh, as a condition of the building like permit. Yeah. So as you know, in order to get their building permit, that needs to be finalized in advance, so they could just kind of work with us internally uh we'll get the you know building commissioner uh, building inspector um dpw and, and parks and rec uh along with tree warden to help make sure that, that thing is uh, worked out in advance of the, of the building so we'll just uh, get that over to uh, the building department so they know that that's a condition and then the uh, tree uh, work has to just be done as a condition of the co so you can take a vote on it um or if you i don't know Linda, yeah. what, what do you think we should do? This? Well, we, I mean, we discussed it. So it can be, you know, part of the conditions on the site plan approval. So that's fine. Makes sense. And we, we did, we, we noted before we voted that we were listing all of Joe's conditions and that was one of them. Yes. Okay. We're good. Very good. You guys are good. Thank you. Thank Did you. I, Thank I, you. I was, I, I, I was a little bit caught off guard by the comments about the sign. So not, obviously, I'm a long way from hanging a sign, but I have to go back to ZBA for the sign? Only if it doesn't comply. 
right. but the sign as envisioned does comply. Or yes, you don't, so the so the planning board doesn't grant the permit for the sign. That's a building department permit. Okay, yeah. okay, Just, okay. Well, well, actually, the, the, then you have to go to the zoning board. But the, okay. the reason we saw the sign was uh, to determine make sure we didn't need a variance with Joe when we were dealing with the building department. Ah, uh, okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. Right. Good night. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Seth, can I get a? Can I request a three-minute stay uh, to you uh, can. walk yes. away and come back? You can do that. <laughs> you want what? <laughs> are we doing? Are we going to one thirty-six Croton? Because then I could just recuse myself in addition to the three-minute stay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah one thirty-six is next, and then thirty Water Street is after that. Okay, so I'm gonna take longer than three minutes. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to recuse myself too. Almost three now. For 30, uh, excuse me, for 136, uh, 140. Okay, thanks. So we're on a three minute break. We can play hold music now. everybody back in and i guess i may you can probably start bringing it in well we'll wait till you give us an uh, introduction we'll, we'll start off with with Croton avenue um so 
Uh, do we have everybody? We're missing. Oh, Joe's back. Joe back. Um, there we go. We're all here. Yeah. Eric and, and Michael are recused. Uh, okay. So um, 136, 140 Croton Avenue. Uh, the applicant has received zoning variances related to parking. Uh, building coverage, uh, building height and stories, uh, got all those on April 12th uh, at the ZBA meeting. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, they finished uh, the last planning board meeting, the seeker process. Um, so right now the applicant needs to finalize um, some of the questions for site plan. Uh, Keller memo, uh, we got a memo to them from Keller Sessions um, on the 22nd. Uh, so they got that last week, they're aware of some of the um, questions related to site plan. Uh, they've already started following some of those up. Uh, I, I think the goal is to get those questions answered in time for next week's work session meeting. So really don't want to spend too much time covering that. Um, there are some BAR questions. Um, and so you um, can talk a little bit about that today. Hopefully we can um, clear up some of the questions around the BAR and see if, uh, you know, see if there are any you know, more clarity that you need from them. Um, is that does that include new material from the last time we had that BRA conversation? Or you know, it's supposed to, but I didn't. I didn't. I okay. looked at it today. I did not see it. We'll talk to them about that. That's fine. Um, I, I think if they do have some of those materials, I think it'd be fine for you to take a look at it. You, you would not be able to take a vote on it. I know that it hasn't been submitted to the to the public. Uh, we can make sure that um, you know will become available. Um, you're not going to take a vote on the BAR stuff today, so you'll, you're looking right. for vote at, uh, at the May meeting, uh, potentially if, if everything is submitted in uh, a timely fashion. Uh, but I think that, you know, they, they should be in a position to talk a little bit about some of those materials. I believe that they got some um, some of that data together. I don't know if they were able to submit it to anybody in time. And, and they've been pretty good about trying to not submit stuff the day before that application. So they may have it on hand, but they just didn't send it in because they don't want to okay. um, put it. Uh, the, there's one question. Um, this property contains two lots. Um, and so we kind of have not really discussed the issue of subdivision here. Um, so I'd like to uh, broach the topic with the applicant today about um, what the plans are there in regards to the lot merger, uh, whether there's gonna be a lot merger and, and how the planning board wants to see that dealt with. Um, and other than that, I mean, just kind of go through those two main issues, the lot merger and the VAR stuff. Uh, with the understanding that uh, we'll be back next week, uh, Thursday, to talk about this. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the Keller Sessions memo. Is that something you know we can just get any initial feedback from them on that, or or where does that? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't. A lot of it is like slip questions. There's some um, details on you know drawing on the plans where the uh, the the public. Um, where the amenities are going, I guess, I, I, the public improvements are gonna go. There, there's stuff that were discussed as a part of the seeker process, but they were not put down on drawings. So, I mean, they can mention that there's not a whole lot to talk about just yet. It's more important that they provide those documents before you take a vote, okay. rather than um, having a long discussion at this point. So, um, so we'll focus on those two issues, subdivision and BAR, and uh, let's bring them in. Okay. Um, Uh, so we have a bunch of people. We got Jacqueline Tyler, Michael Zarin, John Fry. Um, we have Zoom user, which I'm assuming is Joe Apicella. And uh, Franz Locke there. We're going to bring him in too. And I think that's it. Great. Um, all right, welcome in, guys. So as far as where we're starting off, I think you know there's a couple of questions that were that were posed. Maybe if we can start with the subdivision question, um, you know, I think Jaime pretty much just asked it before you came in and you were listening. So I don't know who wants to take the lead here tonight. 
on that. Michael, do you, uh, good evening, Seth, and uh, members of the board. Michael, do you want to grab on that issue? Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I have not, you know, I'm assuming if two lots, then we have a lot merger. Usually that's planning board, just sort of administrative matter. So if there's anything more complicated than that, um, I mean, we'll go back and look at the code, but you want to share at this point? It's usually. I'll have a question, and we should probably talk about it here publicly because, so, you know, obviously it's not in the EAF. It wasn't in the secret determination. It wasn't noticed. So to do a subdivision at this point in the, in the game, uh, you know, ideally a, the subdivision should have been handled earlier. It's the best practice here. I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, mandatory. And it would certainly slow things down. I don't know, Linda, you know, what your recommendation here is on how to deal with this. <laughs> I, 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 Linda, let me jump in for I have no business requirement to do that um, with our project with either HFA or, or the county. I don't have uh, a, a requirement to do that. So it may be a non-issue. So I, I'd have to take a closer look at your code. I'm, I'm not a, and, and Michael, I don't know what you think. I'm not a big fan of the concept of needing subdivision approval to merge lots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, 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 that's, that's what I was trying to say, Linda, less, less eloquently as you. <laughs> We're the old timers here. Um, I, I know there are municipalities that, that do consider that process. Um, I, I'd real I'd have to look at the definition. I don't think your definition of subdivision includes a merger. Um, and there's some language in your code about may, um, as opposed to it being more definitive. So I, I believe that lots can be merged just by a simple request that they be merged because you're not creating an additional lot. It doesn't need the same kind of approvals, doesn't have the same kind of impacts. So I don't see it as an issue. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Jaime, we could we didn't address that in advance, talk about that in advance, but. Uh, it's, it's, it's like been, you know, we've been meaning to talk about it for six months and it just has not been. Principal issue. So you you just wanted to wait till eleven p.m. on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's only ten forty-seven, Michael. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. I, was really in my notes. I was like, Jesus. So, every oh, yeah. last night. I don't. You know, I'm sorry. Okay, let's yeah. let's bring up. Can we maybe then move the conversation just forward into the in, into br bar and kind of get that. Um, just if you have anything that you want feedback from us on, that we would do. Be I think there's confusion, and the materials are actually posted on your agenda, so so yeah. they were submitted. Uh, be, today it asking be, about it. It may be late for you tonight, Jaime. But <laughs> no, no, Joe, you called me and you said, did, "Can we just? Did, we need to bring you card copies." I said, "No." Oh, physical sand, right? We didn't know how you all were handling physical, physical samples, but we samples. submitted. Yeah, <laughs> gave you the high resolution samples you asked for, and they're on your board, and they're all right. They're really permissible, <laughs> you know. So I can go ahead and walk us through all of those. We have made some, what I would say, extensive changes based on the board's feedback last month. I know that you all requested us to evaluate the placement of materials, and we have done that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share screen, if that's okay. I'm gonna jump to, sorry, I was just checking because you made me panic, Jaime. I was like, wait, what's, <laughs> so, um, so I'm gonna start just off on this, on this page. I know um, the last time we spoke, we were talking about hardy materials and a combination of brick. And I believe that at the end of that conversation, we did uh, decide both from the project side as well as the board, that we did feel it was important to keep three, three different materials on this. And so we did um, look at the def at the at defining the materials more significantly than they were. Um, we appreciate the comments back from the board because we think it actually has made the project better, um, similar to some of the comments that we had gotten from the zoning board previously. So we continue to refine this and we think it, you know, we're headed in the right direction and we think we're there, but we're welcome to um, take any comments that the board has. 
what we did um, is we did keep the brick consistent along the base. Um, we've provided additional brick from what was there before. Um, prior, this lower portion was broken up between uh, gray paneling and the siding. So we've kept that consistent with the exception of the residential entrance. So we did keep that the, the um, I say a wood, a composite um, that resembles wood. We did look at that system at the residential. We felt that was the appropriate scale for the residential. We, we so we have maintained that. Um, the gray pan, the gray paneling has shifted to a um, a granite gray epis, and that will be kept um, along um, anything that's pulled back from the facade. So as well as the upper portions of the building, we're hoping that that will um, assist in the upper portions kind of disappearing into the sky. And um, I'll just gonna flip us through because I know you can't see the two ends here. So I'm gonna flip us over to the end elevations. So you'll see that we've tamed the, you know, these corners we do, like I said, we've kept the siding here and anything upper is the EFIS, so it disappears. Um, we have separated, we felt that keeping this panel in between helped to break up the monotony of that side. We thought that was important, so we have introduced the paneling there, but again, kept the lower portion all brick along both the sides and the majority of the front. Um, so in we have added some additional glazing in a few areas just so that we do meet the, um, the minimum glazing. So there were three aspects, the form-based requirements, which included minimum, minimal glazing areas, active edge doorways, which we've um, worked to increase those with, by providing awnings over the commercial spaces, and maintaining an expression line transition, which we have done um, bet you know, between the, the awnings and the upper portion of the cornice along the entire base. Um, and within that, on the commercial side, we do have our signage board locations, similar to the application prior to ours, we aren't necessarily presenting signage for review, but just the signage board locations. Um, and we will submit signage once a tenant has been retained. Um, and so let me just flip back over to, um, so you'll see that these have been updated um, on your end. I do feel I'm gonna flip right back to this one because I feel like it's a lot more telling in regards to the material separation above. And we would welcome any comments the board has. First is just a question. It's a stupid question. It's just you, there's no no change in the massing in any of this. Yeah, it's pretty amazing actually. Yeah, <laughs> just the the way you change it, it's uh, a marked improvement. It looks so much better. I should make one. There was one little one foot discrepancy here. <laughs> uh, not just but that we pulled that back in to keep this solid. Got it to be very for, forward with you. What, so there's one foot change in the massing <laughs> in the front. Um, I, I have a question. Um, I, I, I agree, yeah, it's also an improvement, I think, from, from before. I guess it's a question also maybe for, for Jaime to clarify because on 270-15.1, on the downtown on Crozen Avenue overlay district, there's a whole section there um, on architectural guidelines um, and specifically, it talks about roofs, um, modulation every 60 feet and so on. And I'm wondering um, if, you, if you guys have read through that and if you have addressed that, and that is so, ref most of it is not reflected here. Is yeah, there... so all of these, so you, we had to, that's where some of these um, recessed areas come into play is making sure that we are following that code and preventing any of the 60 foot. So everything is 60 feet or below. As far as it, it's, my assumption is to reduce the monotony along that bit, along the face. Right. Um, and so we, yes, yeah, so we have, um, we have followed that portion and we outlined so, it in the floor plans. So yeah. one is, yeah, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Well, so I, you know, kind of just to, follow up on the evaluation as it goes for our point. So we did have this looked at by BFJ, um, but there's a couple of pieces of this that I think are important to understand about the application of the form-based code here. Uh, number one, the form-based code um, in the downtown overlay district requires that in order for you to get an additional store, you have to get 
uh, special permit and that special permit requires that you evaluate its, its overall conformance with the code. In the Croton Avenue overlay district, the only benefit to utilizing the form-based code that you would be evaluated against is the granting of that um, residential use on the first floor. However, this property does not have any residential use on the first floor. So there's no real area where we would have to hold it against that. Uh, despite that fact, the, um, the application as presented has tried uh, to uh, adhere as much as possible to the form-based code. Where it deviated, it required a variance. Those variances were looked at, but it didn't look at that particular component of the code because they were not in violation of any of the setbacks um, the, you know, the, whether that's the bill two line or anything else in that area of it. Um, so, you know, we didn't provide, I don't think that there were any like explicit comments. It's more of a sort of like, here's the form based code and, and the effort is to try to adhere to it as much as possible. Um, and then that's something that you can use as a guideline here. And, I, and that's where I think uh, you as a board member can kind of provide additional, you know, commentary and guidance and conformance with the code. That, Makes sense that sounds like it might have been yeah. a little confusing as I'm sort of replaying in my head. But no, thanks for that clarification. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try to keep it succinct. Um, for me, just looking at it, uh, the long span in the middle, I see that you've added slope roofs. Uh, I, I see you've added also slope roofs on the other side, uh, on the more residential side as well. Um, so just reading through, uh, I understand it's not a requirement, more, more guidelines, just reading through all those sections in 270-15.1. Um, um, it just seems to me that it, it's talking about modulating uh, a little bit more than what you're showing now, specifically on the middle section with that really big flat roof. Um, if you actually look at it, I don't know if you have an image uh, of an elevation from the other side uh, by this, by the, single family residential side, I actually feel like that side is more in the spirit of, uh, yeah, that side um, in the middle there. Um, it's actually, to me, it's more in the spirit of, uh, of, the, of the code uh, in the way that it's trying to break it down even further than you have on, on the Croton Avenue side. So I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, um, it's a commentary of, of what I see and just looking through through the, the spirit of the code. Um, so I'm curious to, to, to know how other board members feel feel about, about it. Yeah, no, it's it's funny. I mean that 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 continuous bar there is it's you know that's the first thing it's it actually looks different in elevation than it does. In that in that rendering from a moment ago, um, which I think because it for the, the rendering foreshortened the um, I guess the the Watson Avenue side of the building a little bit, so you kind of emphasize this you know that that large that longer gray portion. Um, but I, yeah, it's because it, before everything was it was so broken up that it was like hard to look at, and now you, you know there there may be there may be something in that middle of that building as you were pointing out as you. You know, that, that they have on the rear elevation yeah the one foot that we took out <laughs> it's the one foot that you took out right that you know that 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 you lose that that you know that that broken um effect that you get on the on the back side of the building i it, it, okay. it's, it's yeah I mean, there, there's there may be something in there yeah okay we can um, we can address that yeah other commentary also kind of reading through the codes is about windows specifically. Um, the code has some language in there about, about window patterns and, and so on. Um, and uh, I see that the windows are some section, for example, on the left in the Croton Avenue elevation, you have uh, kind of like the two stories combined into one sort of like to make the, the two stories feel like one story, right? With the inner, with the paneling, with, in, between, with the paneling yes. in between the windows, which, which I, I, you know, I don't have any objection to that, but then you look at other elevation, other parts of that elevation and that, that motif is kind of lost. Then you have something more like individual punch windows. Um, yeah, we reserved by, yeah. that for the commercial corners was where we reserved the paneling 
um, with the exception of this interior here and here. We felt that that added to the architectural element of bookending this middle right. portion. Um, but for the most part, yes, we've kept that to the corner here and Watson celebrating that commercial side. Okay. But if if that um, depending on what the other board members feel as well, we you know we're we can look at that as well. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to, to to visualize what is the the the, the idea behind it. And when you explain it, it sort of makes sense. Um, it wasn't immediately clear. Um, Yeah, I mean, for me, basically, it. honestly, it's just going through. I, I actually I agree with with those those uh, with the form based kind of architectural guidelines. Um, so for me, I would say um, the more it adheres to it, the, the better that it is. It will be for the for the project. Um, essentially, essentially, my my two cents on this. Um, yeah, if you. If you go back to the elevation, Jacqueline, I think there's just yep. the, yeah, it's, it's a little more. This one or the actual the, or the, the actual straight elevation, up. not the rendered. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, just as Ulysses was talking, you, as you read it, the building kind of from from left to right, you know, there's a lot going on on the on the Watson side of the building, and I realize there's the commercial aspect there, but it mm -hmm. it's it's almost like you know there's like all all the time is spent on Watson, and then it kind of like. You know, as you work your way towards prospect, it kind of it it becomes just more more uniform and more everything. You know, the punch windows and the you know kind of the articulation goes away. Um, the Watson side looks looks. You know, I, I like you know it, it's it's broken up and it you know it, it looks you know like you know multiple buildings, multiple massive. Yep. Which I know the opposite feedback that we were giving you last time, but it, 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 it's a little. <laughs> we'll find that balance. We'll find the balance. <laughs> Yeah, we can definitely look at introducing this vocabulary throughout, um, you know, as well as because although this is still uh, based on residential amenities, I, we still kind of look at this as a, an attractive commercial corner for the public, um, as well as in the courtyard area. So we can look at distributing that. Yeah. Other board members thoughts or, or feedback? Yeah, Jacqueline, what what um, material are you using for the railings on the terraces? Like a, a steel, like wrought iron? What is that? Yeah, so it'll be a um, a mix of glass panels um, with, yes, with um, probably aluminum. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts? Nope. Um, all right. I, I will just because we've, we've done it for the other projects at this point, you know, we've had a BAR conversation. We've opened the public hearing here. Um, I just want to see if there's anybody here from the public to speak to this. Um, do we have a motion to open the public hearing? Reopen. Bobby Backer making a motion to reopen a public hearing. Isabel Wynn, I second that motion. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes. We're now in a public hearing. Is there is there anybody here from the public to speak to this application while we're here? If you are, please raise your hand. No. I do not see any hands. Can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Isabel Wynn, motion to adjourn the public hearing. Bobby Bowker, second that motion. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes. The public hearing is adjourned. Um, so I guess this is this project's on the agenda for the for the work session coming up, Jaime. Yep. All right. So I, I guess uh, between now and then we'll we'll see you and hopefully we can work out a few more issues. And... Okay. We did have just some or questions regarding landscape. Should we just discuss those at the work session, which is fine? I think that would be okay. Yeah, that'd okay. be appropriate. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Sounds All right. good. Thank you guys very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have night. a great evening. You too. Thank All you. Right. All right. So now we are up to the last item on the agenda, which is 30 Water Street. Um, Jaime, you can kind of tell us where we are here. Uh, yeah. So we have, um, let me go back to my notes. Um, so we have, um, 
you know, today we kind of want to focus on just going over the materials that have been submitted for the purpose of seeker and determine if any new materials need to be submitted. Uh, this is also coming back at the work session and, and next week uh, where we can kind of get more into the details and start um, seeing if you're going to be ready to make some decisions and determinations on some of the seeker elements. Um, and so, you know, we want the applicant to identify the materials that have been submitted to help the board um, begin to make those determinations on seeker and the applicant should update the board on questions regarding the um, you know, intended changes to the plat plan. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Okay, let's bring them in. So, we have uh, Maxwell Powell from Bar Blender Bell, um, Jim Winling from um, Wilder Balter, Chris Hahn from Wilder Balter, Rich Williams from Insight Engineering. Uh, and there are two other people in the thing. I don't, I'm not sure who they are. A Baker and F. Is this your whole team, um, Rich? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um... So maybe we'll start off with the with the shorter question. You mentioned just the the well, I don't know if it's the shorter question, but just talking about the plat and the just kind of the plans and where we stand with with the, that component. Uh, sure. Yeah, Jim. Um, I don't know. Do you want to deal with that, or Rich? Do you want to deal with that? Jim mentioned in an email that he would talk about it today. Yeah, so. Jim. I, I see you're on mute. Uh, I don't know if you want to unmute yourself. I know he was having some technical difficulties from his location. Oh, now, now I'm off mute, I think. Yes, I, um, I'm at one of our construction field offices and I'm having connectivity problems. So if I lose you, you're in capable hands of Rich. But Rich, you want to pull up the plat that we submitted? Sure. And then just walk through the changes based on um, the email I sent to Jaime this morning or this afternoon? Sure. Um, so one of the things that we did provide the board as part of the submission was a preliminary subdivision plat. Uh, the difference between this submission and the last submission, you may recall that we were previously proposing a three lot subdivision, one lot for the parking garage along Central Avenue, a separate lot for uh, the proposed mixed use building, and then a third lot which contained the Sing Sing Kill and the rear portion which will ultimately uh, be owned by the village. In this version, which is in your current package, we have a two lot subdivision which was uh, discussed in concert with the village whereby we are separating the parking garage and the mixed use building with a line that is following the cursor on my screen. So you, again, you have uh, one parcel in the front and now one parcel in the rear. Um, some concerns were raised by the village in that this property line um, did not include some slopes on this portion of the property, which uh, the village did not want to retain. Uh, there are existing rock slopes. Um, we did an assessment there is gonna be a substantial increase in our project budget to address these slopes, but we are going to be updating this rear property line so that it has a straighter configuration coming across the rear of the property. We'll either tie it into this uh, this line here or maybe to a connection point here. We gotta do some final layout on that, but basically we're just gonna be straightening this property line here so that the majority of the slopes are on this front piece of property. Um, just to give the board a summary too, so you know, we did resubmit. Uh, we've provided, provided you with an updated site plan set, architectural plans, which Maxwell can talk about. This preliminary subdivision plat, SWIP, water and wastewater engineering reports, uh, the U.S. Army Corps uh, request for jurisdictional determination and their response. Since we were last before you, we also met with the village engineer and the water and sewer departments on site. Um, we reviewed the limits of pavement replacement, sidewalk replacement, added those to the drawings. Um, we also had the village verbally confirm that there's adequate water and sewer capacity to serve the project. Um, the other thing we did was we responded to the uh, comments that were provided to us by Keller in sessions. So, sorry, gave you a little bit more of an answer than I think you were looking for, but. Okay. Um, before we move on from that, any, I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward. So I, I, we can, I, I, you know, Per Jaime's introduction, I think we want to 
keep this conversation focused on on Secra and specifically kind of going through and understanding what we what if anything we may need from you in terms of additional studies or documentation um, in order to to you know conduct that evaluation. Um, I mean, I don't know if we want to bring up the, just the just the bigger questions and, and use that as our scaffold here. Yes, 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 yes. So if I can, if you just stop sharing real quick, I'm going to pull up the you know the part two. Um, Jaime, while you're pulling that up, it's also noteworthy to mention that we supplemented our submission uh, with an updated part one EAF reflecting uh, the project changes that were uh, included in this most recent submission. Yeah, that's um, that is on the um, that's available on the agenda. Uh, it was uploaded a few days ago. Um, so I want to just, you know, in a desire to keep this as brief as possible, um, I think that what we uh, want to do here, Rich, is really focus on just getting some feedback from you as to what the materials were that were submitted and not really the content necessarily of those materials. So we don't need to know what's in them. We just need to know that, hey, uh, we submitted this traffic study that looks at traffic issues. We studied, we looked at you know, we had this engineering report, we had this brownfield submission, so on and so forth that deal with these issues. So I'm gonna go through the, the, the questions quickly. Um, that way you can sort of say, hey, this is what we submitted. Um, all right, so the first question is the impact on land. Um, so the proposed action um, may involve construction and or physical alteration of land service of the proposed site. Uh, proposed action may involve construction on land where depth to water table is less than three feet. Um, obviously there's some, air, some work that's gonna go on around the sink sink hill. Um, have you submitted any materials in regards to where the water table is at uh, on the site proper where the, you're going to have the, submit, the submerged garage? Um, have you done any boring tests, submitted your boring tests related to that? So obviously uh, we're going to be doing work in the sink sink kill proper. Um, we expect the water table to be pretty close to the sink sink kill. Um, we haven't provided any specific boring data and we are working on the uh, FEMA floodplain required modeling. Um, we do envision as part of mitigation for this, we'll provide all the proper erosion sediment controls that'll be necessary during construction, um, as well as our construction will comply with uh, the village's floodplain ordinance. Uh, okay. Uh, the proposed action may involve construction on slopes of 50% or greater. Um, I believe there's some minimal work um, on the slope itself, probably stabilizing the slope and the existing uh, retaining walls that are gonna be going on there. Um, so you're gonna obviously have to update some of your plans, based on flat plans, which you're also gonna be working over the, um, working over the actual uh, slope because you're adding a bridge connecting the building to the main street. And you're gonna have to do some thinning out of the trees um, that are on that slope um, just for safety reasons. Um, can you talk about some of the materials that you're submitting related to that? Sure. So we've identified on our current site plan mission the areas where we are going to be performing uh, the work on the steep slopes or slopes greater than 15 percent. Uh, we identified a general scope of work on the plan to be conducted in those areas, which will consist of uh, removing the existing trees. Um, again, the roots are actually the roots of the trees on those existing rock slopes are compromising the slopes themselves. So the geotechnical engineers are recommending the removal. We will then also be scarifying off any loose, loose rock. And right now um, are envisioning that we're gonna be putting down a mesh with both anchorings to help stabilize that existing slope. Again, that work area has been identified on the drawings uh, as part of any work on slopes over 15%. We've taken that into account in the erosion and sediment control plan um, to ensure that, you know, as we are working on slopes, uh, we have proper erosion controls in place to protect the sink sink gill. Uh, proposed action may involve excavation and removal of more than a thousand tons of natural material. Uh, I'm assuming the answer is no, but I actually don't know. Um, we'll have to, I don't know that we've run, Jim, a final number on the amount of tonnage to be removed. 
Um, again, it's the majority of the export on site is going to be associated with the Brownfield cleanup program. So while there may be a moderate to large impact, um, if we exceed that threshold, ultimately, I think that it is not a significant adverse impact because it's part of a cleanup program and is actually an environmental benefit. Okay. And I want, I want to make sure that we're focusing on the, you know, where we're finding this documentation right now. We don't need to go into adverse versus. We've, uh, sure, we've, we've provided a summary of the Brownfield cleanup program, but I don't know that uh, we haven't provided you final uh, export numbers yet. Um, so that's the code that we've given. All right. Um, proposed action rate. And then I'll submit the remedial action work plan that will identify the quantities. Yep. Uh, proposed action may involve construction that continues for more than a year or in multiple phases. Um, documented in the EAF. Okay. Uh, did you have you prepared a construction management plan or just plan? Um, that's out of the, the documentation in the EAF? Uh, we provided overall construction sequencing, which is on the plan, but we haven't done a detailed construction logistics plan that would take the detailed one we would typically do during a site plan review. But we do have overall sequencing on the drawings now. We, we have just been looking at construction mitigation plans as part of a lot of the last couple of secret reviews that we've done here. So that's something you may want to take a look at. Okay. Uh, proposed action may result in increased erosion, whether from physical disturbance or vegetation removal, including treatment uh, by herbicide. So you're, I know that a lot of the work that you're gonna do is in regards to sort of remediation around the kill itself, uh, which is the area most likely to be targeted as well as um, some of the stuff you just mentioned regarding the, um, the holding the rocks gave up with the um, netting. Um, so you're just gonna need to submit plans associated with that. Um, some more detail as to the remedial work that you're going to be doing around the kill. Uh, we can do that. The, the drawings provide all the grading and uh, work that's proposed in and around the kill. Um, we've also provided uh, the scope of work again on the slopes and the erosion control plan and discussed the erosion controls in the SWIP. Okay. So that's... Um, that's it for impacts on land. Are there any other questions, any other comments from the board on that? Good to go? Thumbs up? All right. Moving on, in, impact on geological features. Um, uh, may result in modification of structure and, uh, or inhibit access to any unique and usual landforms, uh, including cliffs, dunes, minerals, fossils, caves. Uh, you have all that information, I think, in the EAF, the long-form EAF, so it's funny to that. So. I think we can skip over that. Um, impacts on surface water. Uh, the proposed action may affect one or more wetlands or other surface water bodies. So I'm not going to get too deep into the details on the questions here, but you did do um, some work associated with the wetlands um, permit. Do you want to just talk about your submission there? Yeah, very high level. We've provided uh, and quantified the amount of impacts to the wetland wetland buffer. We had the wetland delineation completed and verified by the village, and we provide a preliminary wetland mitigation plan. Um, there's some questions. So the proposed action may include construction on, um, on uh, one or more intakes. No, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to see if you were specific. So the SWIP. Um, remind me, uh, does the SWIP provide details on how you're going to um, protect the kill during construction? Yes, on the drawings uh, we've identified, which the drawings are part of the project SWIP, um, just some high level construction sequencing and means and measures to execute that work. Um, any other questions? The board, are ready to go on that one? Okay, impacts on groundwater. The proposed action may result in new or additional use of groundwater. It may have the potential to introduce contaminants to groundwater or an aquifer. Um, you know, what you want to talk about any materials submitted in regards to impact on groundwater? Um, you know, obviously the brownfield cleanup plan is, is part of that. So, I, yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, I was just going to echo the brownfield uh, remediation action plan. I think is actually going to, uh, you know, work in our favor on this. 
um, impact on flooding. Uh, the proposed action may result in development on land subject to flooding. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the, I know there's some work elevating the, the, the building. So, you know. We've, we've had some initial meetings with the village regarding uh, their floodplain ordinance. Uh, we've incorporated that into the arch architectural design on the project drawings. And we have our project geotechnical uh, engineer currently doing the floodplain analysis. Um, all, all the building elevations have been raised um, to meet the floodplain ordinance with respect to mechanical equipment, residential lobby areas, um, and et cetera. Yeah, there's also additional work that you're doing on the kill to create, um, sort of, uh, to slow the pace of the water coming down the kill. Uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the submission. Um, sure. So the project drawings detail two improvements within the sink sink kill that have been coordinated with the village and were part of the original RFP for this project. Uh, the first is a stormwater mitigation area. Um, just below the Central Avenue Bridge around the bend um, where we're going to be creating a stilling basin. That is going to work in concert with a series of piers uh, that are going to be constructed perpendicular to the kill in that area. Um, the idea right now or the idea in working with the village is currently the site experiences flooding because during the first flush after a storm event, debris comes down the kill and clogs the culvert underneath Water Street, which causes water to back up and then fail at the lowest point, which is the site itself. Um, in working with the village engineer, we're going to be providing these stormwater improvements to help catch that debris further upstream where you're in a very large valley of the river and then where there's the ability to pool more water so that we can keep the Water Street culvert clear during storm events. Uh, okay. Uh, any other questions around, you know, submission of materials? And sorry to see any more materials around that. I think we nope. can keep going. Okay. Uh, impacts on air. Um, Pro's action may include a state regulated air emission source. And the answer is no. So moving on. Uh, impacts on plants and animals. Pro's action may result in a loss of flora and fauna. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the submission that you made in regards to the tree permit? Um, so we've done a full tree survey on the property with the exception of the steep slopes where we did a tree count. Um, we didn't do a specific tree survey on the steep slopes due to uh, safety, safety concerns for the survey crews and being able to access the slope and, and get on them. Um, we, uh, in addition, as part of our part one, uh, we included the necessary searches uh, on the New York State DEC's website. Okay, uh, but have you come up with a, um, sorry, go ahead, Seth. I'm no, no, go ahead, that's all right. I was gonna ask, uh, have y'all uh, put together a tree mitigation plan um, for the removal of trees? Um, we do have proposed plantings, but I will check on the tree mitigation plan. Okay. All right. Um, and I don't, I believe the EEF, uh, and I, I think I saw it, was Gina here? No, no I'm sorry, Gina's the other. Uh, Bonnie's not here, right? Uh, so I don't remember if there, this is not affecting any, um, habitat for any rare threatened or endangered species. I, I recall the, that was listed, there's nothing of concern in the EAF, but I just wanna verify. Um, Aaron, that's my understanding, yes, yeah. that's correct. Right. So moving on to agricultural resources, those actually may impact agricultural resources. Answer is no. Impact on aesthetic resources, the land of the proposed action are obviously different from or in sharp contrast to current land use patterns between the proposed project and the scenic or aesthetic resource. Um, have you submitted any materials in relation to this? Yep, um, as, as part of our package, we've, we've provided uh, architectural renderings of our site. From the various vantage points around our site. Um, Maxwell's also provided as part of that overall aerial plans. I mean, our drawings have overall aerial plans, so you can see how we fit into the surrounding locale. Um, I would suspect, based on the information you submit as we move through those questions, you see we would actually have a not a negative impact, but a beneficial impact in transitioning that site from the DPWR to the mixed use development. 
mean, the, the, those documents should be specific. The, the aesthetic resource, the listed aesthetic resource is the river. So, I mean, that's you know, that presentation should be centered around the impact on the river, not the site being ugly or not not being ugly. Is there any, so when you say that, is there something specific you're looking for, like us? The river is the aesthetic resource, I think. Yeah, I actually think, yeah, the renderings that you're talking about, but maybe looking towards the water, you know, just like understanding the impact that this will have on the, you know, on the river. I mean, that's, okay. and, and, and precedence would be helpful in that case as well. Similar projects nearby. Or views to the river. Yeah. From other properties. Um, okay. We can do that. Um, one, uh, Linda, uh, um, just you weren't at the last meeting. One of the things that um, we can obviously provide additional information. Um, Maxwell took uh, a lot of care in designing this building so that it steps. So as you move up Main Street and Central Avenue, it doesn't have the appearance of being taller than the surrounding buildings. Um, so we'll, we'll further support that with additional information. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, uh, impact on historic and archaeological resources. Uh, uh, we've done our ship of search. I think that came back. Uh, okay, but I'll check. Yeah, I thought you submitted a letter. Yeah, I think we have our Chris filing already complete. Yeah, okay. Um, so the impact on open space and recreation, the proposed action may result in a loss of recreational opportunities, reduction of open space resources designated in any adopted municipal open space plan. Um, he's submitted a whole lot there. <laughs> We've identified on our project, um, on our project drawings, where we're actually creating open space and connecting, uh, connecting to the existing public uh, Sing Sing Kill Greenway. Yeah, you know, it's it's worth mentioning here uh, to the board. Uh, I don't think we need to get into it right now. Uh, there is a rec fee, um, but it is, I think, a rec fee as it has to be determined by the planning board. Um, so there's sort of like a standard rec fee, but I don't believe that like the planning board can make a decision to um, to not require it if if um, improvements that are being provided um, mitigate the need for uh, rec fees. Rec fees are basically if you're not providing anything on site. So uh, it's something you're going to want to take up as you get farther into the decision of site plan and everything else. But um, just keep that in the back of your mind. There's been some discussions with the board of trustees about this too, in light of the fact that it's affordable housing. Yeah. Yep. Um, so impact on critical environmental areas. Uh, I So I believe it is in a critical environmental area around the Hudson River, but... Um, the, yeah. yeah. Even the last uh, presentation, you know, talking about you know fish elevators and there there are other you know there, there are mitigating things that you're doing that can be presented in the context of that question as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, so i'm going to skip over that one uh impact on transportation proposed action may result in a change to existing transportation systems so um they submitted a transportation uh a traffic study um that traffic study they got feedback recently um i think within the last week or so from who's the consultant, Joe? Uh, Kimley Horn was our consultant and yeah. Collier's Engineering. Review. Collier's Engineering, Phil yeah. Greeley. Yeah, so, so they, they've received feedback from that. We're expecting a response to that uh, feedback um, in due time. Uh, is there anything else, Does, you know, the board, I don't know if the board had an opportunity to like, take a look at those comments. Um, is there any desire to see an expansion of the um, study area beyond what really recommended, which included, um, Joe Tremelli helped me remember, they included the Snowden Highland um, intersection, right? I'll have to pull his memo. I don't remember offhand. Yeah, it's pretty extensive. So I think this, their, their expanded study area is pretty extensive. So I don't know if, if there's any particular concern here from the board of intersections they'd like to see studied as part of the traffic study. Um, this is a good time to mention it. It showed the, the five-way light, right? That was one of the... Um, I thought that it did. I, honestly, I don't recall. 
Yeah, I believe it did, but I'm sorry. At this late hour, I'd have to go back and check. Yeah, that's you can I mean. verify. That, that would be the only other one that I'd want to make sure. But yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in there. Okay. Um, so impact on energy proposed action may cause an increase in the use of any form of energy. <sighs> I think this information is is detailed in the EEF. So I don't know that you're going to need any additional information here. Uh, impact on noise, odor, and light. Um, I do have a question. Uh, so in in um, federally funded projects that are receiving, uh, I think, home money, they're required to have a certain amount of soundproofing if they are within a certain proximity of a train or train station. Uh, do you know whether or not you uh, this project is impacted by any of that? Have you started the NEPA review um, as a part of your, you know, tax credit funding, or do you anticipate having to do a NEPA review for any county funding? We will check on that, Jaime, and get back to you. Okay. Um, if so, yeah, I would just submit all your NEPA material that you're going to have to do. Okay. There's no home money proposed here, but we'll check into it and get back to you. Okay. We also typically look at construction impact during in this section. So if any blasting or any other you know, noise creating operations. Okay. Um, and the lighting plan, whatever the lighting plan is, I think we just need to get it submitted to us. Um, I, it may be in there. I'm not sure, but um, we've not provided a photometric plan yet. You have not? Correct. We have not. Okay. So yeah, we just need to get that. Um, okay. Uh, anything else, board, on that? Okay. Um, impact on human health. Uh, proposed action may have an impact on human health from exposure to new or existing sources of contaminants. Um, I, you know, I think the Brownfield cleanup plan probably is, is going to deal with a lot of these questions here. Um, so that plan probably can detail how it's cleaning up the site and the, the level of cleanup that's required to turn it into a residential property. Yeah, the remedial action work plan addresses all of that. We'll submit that. Um, the site of the action is subject to an institutional control limiting use of the property. Um, so you are doing that actually here. You're limiting the use of the property half of the property is going to revert back to the village as a essentially a conservation easement or a comment. Actually, Linda, maybe you can detail. How is it going to be reverted back to us? Is it, is it going to be reverted back to us as undevelopable land? I mean, it is undevelopable because of the steep slope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to revert back to us. It's going to retain, be retained by the village. The village is only going to transfer title to one lot and just retain the other. Okay. All right. Um, okay. There will be a easement through the middle of it, um, Rich, regarding the- Lots of these yeah. <laughs> All right, let me, I don't mean to undersell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, all right. So, I mean, all of your materials submitted to deal with that. So I think it's fine. Uh, consistency with community plans. Um, I know that Bonnie has put together some materials. They have not been submitted, but I've seen them uh, internally. Um, so uh, you may want to um, submit a, just a letter analysis on these items, these last couple items, basically the consistency with community plans, consistency with community character. I'm not sure if some of that information is already in the EAF, um, but if not, um, certainly a, a letter addressing some of the questions on that would be helpful to the board. Okay. Um, that's it. That's good. Okay. So we can uh, dig into this a little bit more during the work session. All right. All right. Very good. We have our list. Got your list, and uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see you guys in, in, in about a week. And then, uh, as for the rest of the board, I, we uh, I think we're we're certainly through the agenda. Is there anything else that we need to just review or discuss, Jaime, before we uh, all go to bed?
<laughs> did we uh, approve the minutes? We did. Oh, yes. okay. I'm tired. Sorry. <laughs> no, that was like hours ago. Right? I I forgot. So long ago, you can't remember. <laughs> exactly. We, we, um, we moved all the minutes to the beginning of the meeting so that if necessary, Jamie Kane could sort of dip out and not, she didn't have to hang out because otherwise she's just got to sit in here listening to everybody yeah. talk. So. And then I guess the only thing we should just touch base is that so currently you know that the state law was amended regarding public meeting well it was there's a change in the state law regarding public meetings in the, in the most recent budget um we're remote this month we have the opportunity to be remote next month but then after that right the, the following meeting which would be june um we would be back in person with a remote option but is there anything that we like waiting for the, the board of trustees to put, pass any clarification law or anything we can just kind of no, the I only think thing that they can do, it's it's essentially a hybrid that is permitted, um, but you would, the board would still have to be, or at least a quorum of the board has to be in person. Okay. So I'll, I'll work with Stuart and we'll provide you, if the village is going to take any action to allow that, we'll get you that information, um, certainly before. The, the current authorization expires June 8th. So it can actually get you through next month's meeting and and work session. Okay. And will work sessions work sessions will be in the same boat as all of this? So we would still need to be in person for work sessions, even though they work really well remotely. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just saying. You're the only one on my boards who's still remote. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Sounds good. Um, I guess we're the smart board. I guess, right? What's that? Not like we're the smart board, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm in person everywhere else. So this this too shall end. Um, all right. So can I just have a, a motion then to uh, to close tonight's meeting? Isabel Lynn, motion to close the hearing, the meeting. Sorry. Michael Aronson, second. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes. And good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.